The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. It is Monday, June 5th, 2023. We're on Guardian Radio 96.9. This is Morning Blend. Government eyeing a sugar tax and a new hospital for Nassau. Going to cost almost $300 million. Later on the show, we will be talking with Doctors Hospital. You want to stick around for that. That's all this morning as Morning Blend begins. Chester Robards, filling in for Dwight Strawn this morning, and you're listening to Guardian Radio 96.9. This is Morning Blend, and uh, later on the show, um, I guess you'll be joining me as my co-host today. Dwight is taking a quick break, maybe much needed. But we have a lot of great stuff going on in the show for you. As I said earlier, uh, we will be talking with Doctors Hospital. Uh, and in Morning Blend Business, we'll be talking hurricanes because hurricane season has begun. But first, we'll go into the overnight, the latest breaking news while you were sleeping. The headlines. <laughs> And the government is eyeing a sugar tax measure, which is intended to force behavioral choices. The sugar tax aimed at forcing people to cut the consumption of sugary drinks and ultimately lead to a reduction in the high level of non-communicable diseases in the Bahamian population. That appears to be on the way. Though Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Philip Davis said in his 2023-2024 budget communication last week, that there will be no new taxes in the new fiscal year, which starts July 1st. The Customs Management Amendment Bill 2023, which the government tabled in the House of Assembly, along with the various budget documents, 
would empower the Minister of Finance after consultation with the Minister of Health to make regulations providing for the payment of a health and wellness levy on the importation of specified goods and domestically manufactured goods deemed to have a negative impact on health and wellness. It says, quote, we're definitely laying the foundation for what is to come as it relates to sugar-sweetened beverages, said Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Michael Darvel. Though he stressed yesterday that this is not a revenue-generating measure by the government, but a move intended to encourage behavioral changes among Bahamians. And the new hospital for New Providence will cost nearly $300 million and will be situated on more than 40 acres of land on Purple, Purple Track. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Michael Darvel said yesterday the cost for the new facility is detailed in the 2023-2024 budget in the annex. The government said that the preparatory work and construction for the facility will cost $289 Point four million dollars. The government budget to just two million for the project this fiscal year, though. The minister said he wanted the new hospital line item in the budget to show Bahamians that the government is serious about building the facility. He said, quote, I made sure to put that in there to solidify in the minds of the Bahamian people that this project is a real project. It's not a pie in the sky. It's a real project. And Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard yesterday accused Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis of misleading Parliament when he said that the 2023-2024 budget has no new taxes. Pintard pointed to several bills tabled following Davis's budget communication in Parliament last week, commonly known as the budget bills, which contain several new taxes. He says, quote, the power to impose and increase taxes, fees, and levies falls under the ambit of the constitutional money bills and must be brought to the people's representatives for consideration. The FNM will not support attempts by this increasingly brazen and unaccountable PLP government to sidestep Parliament's authority and oversight. But in a statement last night, the office of the Prime Minister slammed Pintard and FNM for leaving the country in an economic mess. OPM said to hear the leader of the opposition now make factual in, factually incorrect accusations against the government's budget is the worst kind of hypocrisy. And the government has outlined $64 million for con consultants. The government allocated the money for consultancy service in the upcoming fiscal year. In the current budget, the government originally allocated $65.1 million for consultancy services, but according to the 2023-2024 budget tabled in Parliament last week, that figure ballooned to $76.2 million. In the upcoming fiscal year, 34. Thirty-four government ministries and departments have allocations for consultancy services. The Ministry of Finance has the largest allocation coming in at 20.1 million, down from the 29 million allocated in the 2022-2023 fiscal year. The Department of, Edu of Environmental Health allocation increased slightly from 18.46 million to 18.48 million. And the government is seeking to amend the Immigration Act to empower the minister to impose a levy on work permit fees that may be used for the purpose of immigration enforcement and national health and wellness program promotion programs. A bill tabled in Parliament on Wednesday also seeks to amend the Act to specifically provide that an economic permanent residence certificate may be granted without the right to engage in gainful occupation. The amendment bill would permit the individual to have the right to engage in gainful occupation in his own business or without the right to engage in gainful occupation. The government has also tabled the Public Finance Management Immigration Levy Special Fund Bill 2023. 
The bill would establish a fund to be known as the Immigration Levy Fund to meet costs associated with immigration enforcement. National Health and Wellness Program, supervised by the Ministry of Health and Education, and training program supervised by the Ministry of Education. Let's take a look overseas. A wayward and unresponsive business plane that flew over the nation's capital Sunday afternoon caused the military to scramble a fighter jet before the plane crashed in Virginia, officials said. The fighter jet caused a loud sonic boom that was heard across the capital region. Hours later, police said rescuers had reached the site of the plane crash in a rural part of Shenandoah, the Shenandoah Valley that had no survivors. The federal Aviation Administration says the Cessna Citation took off from Elizabethtown, Tennessee on Sunday and was headed for Long Island's MacArthur Airport. Inexplicably, the plane turned around over New York's Long Island and flew a straight path down over D.C. before it crashed over mountainous terrain near Montebello, Virginia around 3.30 p.m. It was not immediately clear why the plane was non-responsive, why it crashed, or how many people were on board. The plane flew directly over the nation's capital, though it was technically flying above some of the most heavily restricted airspace in the nation. A U.S. official confirmed to the Associated Press that the military jet had scrambled to respond to the small plane, which wasn't responding to radio transmissions, and later crashed. The official was not authorized to publicly discuss details of the military operation and spoke on condition of anonymity. Flight tracking sites showed the jet suffered a rapid spiraling descent, dropping at one point at a rate of more than 30,000 feet per minute before crashing in the St. Mary's Wilderness. And the United States military released a video Monday of what it called an unsafe Chinese maneuver in the Taiwan Strait on the weekend, in which a Chinese Navy ship cut sharply across the path of an American destroyer, forcing the U.S. vessel to slow to avoid a collision. The incident occurred Saturday as the American destroyer USS Chung-Hoon and Canadian frigate HMCS Montreal were conducting a so-called Freedom of Navigation Transit of the strait between Taiwan and mainland China. China claims the democratic self-governing island of Taiwan as part of its own territory and maintains the strait is part of an exclusive economic zone, while the U.S. and its allies regularly sail through and fly over the passage to emphasize their contention that the waters are international. During the Saturday transit, the Chinese-guided missile destroyer overtook the Chonghun on its port side then veered across its bow at a distance of some 150 yards, according to the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. The American destroyer held its course but reduced speed to 10 knots to avoid a collision, the military said. The video released Monday shows the Chinese ship cutting across the course of the American one, then straightening out to start sailing in a parallel direction. The Indo-Pacific Command said the actions violated maritime rules of safe passage in international waters. Let's take a look at sports now.
And the team confirmed for the NACAC age group eight earned spots on the team on Team Bahamas, and they're set to travel next month following a very competitive Bahamas Association of Athletic Associations age group trials and kids athletic championships at the end of last week at the original Thomas A. Robinson Track and Field Stadium. An eight-member national team was able to be identified and will represent the Bahamas at the 4th North American, Central American, and Caribbean Athletic Association Age Group Championships July 15th and 16th in Santiago de los Caballeros, Dominican Republic. The top two finishers in the under-13 and under-15 divisions will receive that honor going up against the region's best in about a month's time as far as island representation is concerned. The team is split straight down the middle with four coming from Grand Bahama and the other four from the capital, New Providence. In the under-13 girls division, Trinity rolled from Fast Track Athletics in Grand Bahama, won the title, accumulating 2,594 points over the two days of competition. Samaya Strawn from Boost Athletics in New Providence finished second with 2,535 points. Jesse Johnson from the Striders Track Club missed out on the two automatic qualifying spots for the national team, but secured the bronze on Friday, finishing third with 2,511 points. And for a second consecutive year, Grand Master Johann Sebastian Christensen has emerged as champion in the Orjan Lindroth Memorial Chess Tournament Open category. The 2023 tournament was held at Breezes Resort. It began on May 31st, wrapped up on June 5th. In the competition, the players played nine intense rounds over four days. It featured players from nine countries, including the Bahamas, Spain, Norway, Serbia, the United States of America, Cuba, Canada, the Cayman Islands, and Jamaica. The tournament utilized the Swiss system, which is similar to a round-robin tournament. Cash prizes were awarded to the top five finishers in the open category and top three finishers in the 1700 and under category. The highest placed Bahamian in the open category was Dr. Kenville Lockhart, who ended up 11th. The 1700 and under category was won by Jamaica's Angelus McDonald, Avian Pride, who was the best local player in that category, placed second. Christensen, who is Norwegian, was tied with Spanish GM Jose Jimenez with eight points, but won the tiebreaker. He said he was happy to be back and defend his title. And it was a holiday weekend this past weekend, but that did not stop the kiddies from coming out and participating in the Bahamas Association of Athletic Associations age group trials and kids athletic championships at original, the original Thomas A. Robinson Track and Field Stadium. As you look at sports, let's take a look at sports overseas. Sorry, no sports overseas. Technical difficulties. <laughs> That's your look at what's in the overnight and you look at local sports. Your first look at weather is up next.
Just want to let you know that Morning Blend is brought to you by Nescafe Coffee. Elevate your coffee experience with Nescafe Gold. And in your public forecast for Monday, June 5th, the remnants of Arlene, along with a surface trough, will continue to weaken and exit the area, allowing for a more stable weather pattern across most of the area through tonight. In special warnings, mariners and residents should remain vigilant for possible water spout and funnel cloud activity. Localized flooding can be expected to persist in flood-prone areas during heavy and or prolonged rainfall events. For the Northwest Bahamas, weather partly sunny and hot with the chance of a few isolated showers and possible offshore thunderstorms today. Mostly fair and warm tonight with the chance of an isolated shower or an offshore thunderstorm. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west and northwest at 10 to 15 knots over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean but up to 5 feet in northeasterly swells along northern exposures, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas. For the central and southeast Bahamas, weather variably cloudy and hot, with a few scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms across portions of the area through tonight. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west to southwest at, west at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times, mainly across the southeast Bahamas over open waters, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your daytime high temperature today, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Your low temperature, 75 degrees. We'll have an extended forecast for you later on in the show. Morning Blend uh, will return right after this. Wake up, it's a new day It's the start of the start of a new way You know that It's the start of the end of the old way Wake up, it's a new day Wake up, it's a new day business couldn't survive without my credit card machine from Fidelity. It's fast, convenient, and my clients love it. My sales increase, and I can track my earnings. Get your credit card machine from Fidelity today. Call 356-7764. Jubilee. Talk class culture, red carpet couture. Get ready to enjoy the best in Bahamian fashion. It's Jubilee. Jubilee. An evening of culture and couture fashion show. Friday, June 9th at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort under the patronage of Dame Marguerite Pindling. Jubilee. Doors open at 7 p.m. For tickets and details, visit celebrate-bahamas.com. Celebrate Bahamas on Facebook. Call 604-1020 or email independencebahamas at gmail.com. Tickets also available at Suncash. And Winnie. We are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double, or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. You could win your share of $1,000 and free annual memberships when you apply for your Mobile Assist Visa Travel Rewards Card. It's a prepaid visa that gives you access to travel and online shopping deals worldwide every single day. Enter automatically when you successfully apply through our Mobile Assist app. Use your prepaid visa five times or more and you are automatically entered to win your share of $1,000. See our social media pages for more details. Apply, save, and win with Mobile Assist. The third annual Acklands Cascarilla Heritage Festival, June 8th to the 11th. 
Come celebrate down home style during three days packed with activities. Hear native stories and songs as we kick off opening night at the King Eric Vagata Park. Explore Acklands and its rich history, family roots, and natural resources, all while sightseeing. Taste island cuisine and enjoy cultural activities every night on the Regatta Park grounds. We've got bark beating contests, quadrille dancing, cascarilla racing, and activities for the kids. Music performances by Ebony242, The Magical Beat Band, Bloody Shine, and Sugar, and other special guests. The third annual Acklands Cascarilla Heritage Festival, June 8th to the 11th, down in Spring Point, Acklands. Book your seats now by calling Bahamas Air. See you there. This ad has been sponsored by Screws and Fasteners World. The Access Accelerator Small Business Development Center is here to help small businesses throughout the entire Bahamas. To better serve you, we've made it easier to contact us. Call 461-7232, WhatsApp 359-0626 or 359-2394, email helpdesk at spdcbahamas.com or submit a ticket when you visit our help center at accessaccelerator.org. The Access Accelerator, empowering small business. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Wake up. Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, we start on the start of the new way. You know that we start on the end of the old way. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on www.guardiantalkradio.com and the Guardian Radio app for your smart devices and on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 or BTC Flow Channel 612. Guardian Radio is all over social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Chester Robards. Dwight is taking a quick break or something. You can join our conversation today. Tweet us at MorningBlend969 or follow the hashtag MorningBlend. Be sure to like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash MorningBlend969. Leave your comments and read what other people are saying on about the topics on the show. You can email us <coughs> at MorningBlend at NASCAR.com or you can text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC. Text us at 422-GR96. That's 422 Four seven nine six standard text rates to apply. Of course, you can always call us. Our telephone lines three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine, and you can call us toll free from the family islands two four two three zero zero five seven two zero. 
That's 242-300-5720. Also coming up this morning, more weather and traffic in business news in Morning Blend Business. We'll be talking about hurricanes with Wayne Neely in his new book, And later in the show, in our 8 o'clock hour, Doctor's Hospital will be on with us. Um, We'll be hearing about some good stuff. But first, it's time to talk about what's in the news. And in the news, as we heard earlier in the show, uh, there, the government says there's no new taxes, right? Um, during its uh, during the budget communication last week, um, though, it's made provisions for some taxes, right, to be put in place. Now, I guess part of the question uh, is what's a tax uh, versus what isn't a tax, right? Um, And I guess some people may blur the line. um, And we definitely want to talk about, so the government is looking at a sugar tax. Let me read this again, the government. They want to cut the consumption of sugary drinks, and um, of course we know what's happening in this country and other countries when it comes to soda drinking um, in excess, coupled with people not exercising at all, or very little. And um, so Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Philip Davis said in his 2023-2024 budget communication last week, that there will be no new taxes in the new fiscal year, which starts July 1st. Uh, The Customs Management uh, Amendment Bill 2023, which the government tabled in the House of Assembly along with the various budget documents, would empower the Minister of Finance after consultation with the Minister of Health to make regulations providing for the payment of a health and wellness levy on the importation of specified goods and domestically manufactured goods deemed to have a negative impact on health and wellness. So, it's a, it's a, it's part of uh, the tax regime, yes. Um, Can you avoid paying it? Absolutely. And I think that is probably where we kind of blur the lines on certain things. Um, is I feel like a tax, and let, and let me just tell you what I personally feel like a tax is something you don't, you can't avoid. You cannot avoid paying taxes, right? If you own a home, it's on a plot of land, and it's more than three hundred thousand dollars, you're going to pay real property tax. If you buy anything, you're going to pay value added tax um, if it applies to that particular business, right? Um, so. You can't avoid it. The point of the sugar tax, as it's called, is is when you see that a soda costs just a little bit more money, then you may decide not to buy it. Or you may even think to yourself, now that you know that there's a sugar tax, hey, they put a tax on this. Maybe I should think twice about it because it may not be healthy for me. So... What do you think about that? You know, given the uh, high rates of, uh, of diabetes in this country, given the high rates of obesity in this country, um, I would go for the, the levy on, on the sugary drinks. That's just me. That's my opinion. Um, Before I go any further, I do want to uh, send 
uh, our condolences, Guardian Radio 96.9, uh, to the Goff family. Um, as most of you uh, may know or remember, Farrell Goff uh, was a co-host uh, on Morning Blend um, for a very long time with Dwight. And uh, his wife passed away over the weekend. And we just uh, want to send our condolences out to the Russells, the Pratts, and of course to the Goff family on the passing of uh, Monette uh, Goff. Um, very, very sad occasion. Um, I knew Manette, uh, I, knew, I know Farrell. Um, we were neighbors at one point. And um, just uh, want to keep them and uh, keep him and his family in prayer. And uh, yeah. So, a sugar tax. We're also talking about a new hospital um, for Nassau that's going to cost about $300 million. And it's not going where you thought it might go. <laughs> it's not going where I thought it might go. Um, Papal Tract, uh, an acreage um, of land on Papal Tract. I know everybody's brain was probably somewhere around... Um, around Gladstone Road because of some stuff that popped up before the election. Uh, I'm kind of glad that it's not. Don't ask me why. Anyway, so the government's saying, uh, so there's, in the annex of the budget book, as we call it, um, it outlines how much the new hospital is going to cost, but it's not actually in the budget for 2023-2024. And uh, we have Dr. Darville saying that they just want uh, the Bahamian people to know and understand that they are serious about getting a new hospital built. Um, so that's why they put it in the annex. So what do you think about that? Uh, let's take a call. We got a call coming in, yeah? Let's take this call. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Morning Blend. Hey, good morning, Morning Blend. Morning. How you doing? Good. How's it going? I'm doing fine. But hey, like your Dwight did a good. Dwight did. You know why? Dwight. That's just my opinion. Dwight took off this day for re these days for reasons, right? I only speculating the reason. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying to you guys is, I was following Guardian Radio from the inception, right? Yep. And Guardian Radio came off fighting everything that moved, right? What we're watching on the ground today, right, is, 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 is the continuing selectiveness of Guardian Radio when it comes to what they what, what, what I just be listening to every morning, right? Um, because we, we, had a, we had a historical event in this country just uh, on Friday, and Guardian Radio even, even, it's like Guardian Radio is, is going along with the status quo that we was one time fighting against, and that's the PLP and the FNM, right? I, I, we, we, are watching, we are watching this, you know, because um, the, 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 the fight with, 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 with Guardian Radio had, it feel like it's dumbing down, man, you know? It's dumbing down because they could, have see, they could have report everything which transpired around the world, but a historical event that took place right in the midst on a whole day, Guardian Radio ain't even utter what utter. So that says to me that Guardian Radio is, is have, have, have already joined the status quo because there's no way Guardian Radio could be looking at, at, at the status quo, we call it the FLM and the PLP, to, to, to ever do what they say they was going to do. I, right? Let's, so listen, we'll be before, too, we'll, we'll, before, you, before you go too much further bashing yep, Guardian yep, Radio. Yep. I, I'm going to tell you no lie. What historical event are you talking about? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I have no... Personally, <laughs> personally, right, Chester me, Robots, Chester. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let me Chester. Yeah. Right? The COI had a rap on, 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 on our key park on, on Friday afternoon, uh -huh. right? And it was impossible to miss. Oh. Let me ask... Why, sorry, why was that historic? It was it it was it was 
it's impossible to miss. A, you can tell me. Oh, but, you, but you call it you call it historic. Why is it? Why was it? Historic? It was historic because there's there was no time in our in the history of our country that that we had a rally called a um, such time that 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 um um that 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 caused there to be the most people was so the at that time. I, I mean, I could I stand to be corrected. But for, for 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 what I um, for what I um, um, know or, or um, um, know of, it ain't never happened before, because the people are tired of the status quo in this country. Chester and Guardian Radio was one time leading that course, and I I'm, 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 as as a as an avid listener and, and and contributor of Guardian Radio, mm-hmm. Guardian, we, hey, we gotta get we gotta get back on it, man. We we just can't just to be selecting things that, that, that are not even beneficial to what the people want to hear. Yes, it's good to hear about the, but the, but the cool, I mean, the, the worship and all the rest of them stuff and, the, and, 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 and what, what the man call him, um, the Lion King, when he comes and tells us all type of stuff, we don't, we, 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 we're not listening anything from the Lion King no more because mm-hmm. the, the, um, the, the, we didn't prove that, it, it, that everything is a lie. Right. So, but in order for us as a people to transform this country, order this, order this stench of status quo ness, right? We can have to. All of us can have to combine and 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 and, and fight this fight, man. Because oh, we can't allow the PLP or the FLM to ever believe that they can hold um um the vehement people them down to the media. And this is what this guy up up uh, um um I'm um, saying that he is he is attempting to do. But just that, this is nothing personal against you. Oh, or no, no, I, I because you know I, I support you all guys. But I yeah. just had the, <laughs> I that's what we are feeling on the ground. Yeah, I, I, and you know that we talk about it, and I, right. I appreciate it, appreciate that. Um, I didn't even remember that the coalition of independence had something. Um. So, so what did you think about that? Hey. It's not in the newspaper, but if you want to talk about it, please feel free. Um, because apparently some other people feel this way and have started texting and saying, um, wait, let me start with the other thing they're saying. The, crit- the caller's critique of 96.9 is spot on. From we saw Juan just evaporate, it was the final confirmation that things ain't the same there. Okay, if you say so. Um, they also say, I think at this point with this administration suffering from a phenomenal lack of both transparency and trust and waiting to hear what alternative recommendations the opposition will make. In the past, we allowed the opposition to sit and just wait for the current administration to get booted out. Let's see if the FNM has learned anything or will maintain the status quo. Well, um, well, okay, um, I'm going to. Reserve my comment for the moment. Um, this person says, COI was on Friday, so only today it would be mentioned, right? You are absolutely correct. However, um, we don't have it in our paper. Um, is COI still a registered thing? And Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They were a coalition of independents. So are they now a party or are they a bunch of independents? I don't know. I really, I, I am, I'll be honest, I'm completely ignorant to their makeup. Um, and somebody texting, asking when they wanted to end the call. Um, this person saying the coalition of independents, which is an oxymoron itself, Having a rally is not historic. I agree. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure why they call all that historic. Um, as the CDR, DNA, etc., have done so before. Absolutely. Actually, the DNA was probably a little more historic than any other ones. But let's take this call coming in. Uh, good morning, caller. Welcome to Morning Blend. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I always see a person who's talking about. The COI, right? Yeah. And them being the choice that people should make, right? Now, I'm not for or against them, but my point is, it doesn't matter who you vote in. 
unless you hold people accountable, nothing is going to change. Because even if we vote in the Coalition of Independence, it's still the same pool of people going into Parliament. And we have the exact same problem we have as we're having now. So until Bahamians take a stand and start take, um, holding people accountable and demanding more, nothing will change. I, I don't know. I, it's like people feel as if once you vote a third party and you get this miraculous change where everything is going to be good. Mm -hmm. But it's the same Bahamians with the same mentality going in. Well, yeah, absolutely. And what do you think about the mentality of some of the Bahamians that you've seen with the COI? You know? But I, I mean, and other parties, me, it doesn't matter, but I agree with you. I, I understand. For me, most Bahamians don't act or respond to something until it affects them directly. For the most part, people don't really care about others' concerns, needs, wants. You know what I'm saying? If, if, it's, not, if it's not on their doorstep, they don't seem to care. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, I, some text coming in, people saying, uh, you know, it was a significant crowd out at the COI rally um, or whatever it was uh, they were holding at Arawaki. And, um, and that's great. That's great. I, I love, the, you know, we have a democracy um, so people can go and listen to and follow whomever they want. Um, and, and I don't know what, what the topics were out there and you know, what they talked about, because I, I didn't go. Uh, and if you went, if you want to chime in by text or, or call in and let us know, um, were, they, were they making sense? You know, <laughs> that's what makes, makes the difference in politics, I guess. Um, somebody texted, you know, asking about the, the, um, the opposition and, and is the, pretty much asking, is the opposition making sense? Um, are they or are they just, in some cases, um, opposing things that the government puts out for opposition's sake? And we we've talked about that countless times. Uh, you know, even here in the media, we've seen statements come out from uh, the F and M, and we are a little boggled about you know what it is they're talking about, uh, what it is they are trying to say about certain. Things and, and, and did it even warrant putting something out? Because, you know, in some cases it just, I, well, I won't say it didn't make sense, but it didn't seem completely relevant. It just seemed like uh, you, you were just releasing a statement for releasing its sake. You know, and that, and I, I don't think people want to see that kind of stuff anymore, right? Um, unless you, come with a big giant hammer uh, as the official opposition, like, you know, releasing a statement just to keep your name out there, doesn't move the needle. And I think that's what that texter is saying. Um, they said, in the past, we allowed the opposition to just sit and wait for the current administration to get booted out. Let's see if the FNM has learned anything or will maintain the status quo. Um, I hope they've learned something. <laughs> this person says, <clears throat> a rally at a public place on a holiday where that public place is normally filled with people, I don't think that crowd can count. <laughs> Try having it in an actual building and see if the same crowd appears. Ah, that's a great point. That is a great point. Like Some people might have meandered over to the COI rallies, what you're saying. Uh, let me see what's going on over here. And I actually know one or two people who did that. Um, but again, I, I didn't l ask them what was going on there or you know, what was said. So maybe they can chime in. Um, and again, if you want to chime in and, and tell us what it is they were talking about out there and if it was making sense, uh, three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine and if you're in the family islands two four two three zero zero five seven two zero that's the toll free number you can text us four two two four seven nine six let us know um that was a good text i i i do 
I don't I don't know whether it's true or not, but the fact remains, you know, it is a crowded place on a holiday. So um, to say you had an, had a big crowd may not be accurate. I mean, did did you lure that crowd or did you inherit that crowd? Is what they're saying. Um, this text coming in saying I cannot support COI in Lincoln Bain. He is a dishonest person. I don't know why you think that. Uh, he owes a lot of. Okay, I don't know about that. Uh, okay, you, you gotta take that up with him. Um, uh, this person says, "Good morning. I agree with the caller. I listen to Guardian Radio every day, and a man was murdered through my corner of Sandlands Village Road. Guardian gives news all day. However, from January or February, I have yet to hear about that murder on Guardian Radio. Well, that." Could be for a whole host of reasons, and uh, I can guarantee you if the Guardian, um, if the Guardian found out about it, it would be reported. Um, this person says, when the PLP made press statements every day while in opposition, y'all was foot to foot behind them. Wait. When the PLP made press statements every day while in opposition, y'all was foot to foot behind them. If it rained hard or the sun was too hot, Mitchell had a press release. I guess the menace hate was too strong and clouded common sense thinking. I don't understand. You, maybe you could say whatever that is. Cheater the sea. This is a text. Cheater the sea. I, maybe they're saying Chester the sea. Whatever you call them. They is a mega party, store up a lot of trouble nonsense. No sense. I don't fix that text and send it again. And don't call me cheater. Okay, this, um, this, I don't understand what this person is saying. When the PLP made press statements every day while in opposition, you always foot to foot behind them. Maybe it is making sense. Maybe. Maybe that's what it was. I do not know, but the topic at hand again is uh, the sugar tax. You agree with it? You disagree with it? There is a new hospital um, that's going to cost three hundred million dollars that will go somewhere around the Propal Tract area. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, and then Pintard is saying uh, again. Um, that the Davis administration misled Parliament when they said that there's no new taxes. Oh, boy. Um, mm. The words, the words that, that, that are used, misled, and, you know, those kinds of... Um, those kinds of things that just spark uh, a feeling in people. I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not convinced that... that, that you know, I mean, most Bahamians are not prone to being, I hope, I, I hope I'm being truthful about this. Most Bahamians are not prone to being uh, taken advantage and fool of by government. Say, oh, I, I want to bite my tongue for saying that. But I hope that what I'm saying is true. You know, I listened to the, the speech. Um, I read things. I looked, you know. I asked questions at the press uh, briefing last week, and um, the so the this sugar tax that they're calling a tax um, that they're calling a levy um, again the sugar tax it still has to be discussed with the minister of health uh, from what we're we're reading and. Um, And so, you know, again, if that if if there's a, a new customs, an increase on on a line item in customs, right? And you have to pay more for it on the shelf. Yes, it, you know, there's there's a tax attached to it, but you could avoid that item. Like there's certain things in in this country that costs a lot to bring in that maybe a lot of you don't ever interact with. So you don't actually, you don't feel the cost of it because you don't buy it. 
Um, and that is kind of the same thing with with the sugar tax, uh, sugary drink tax with soda. Um, you know, if you don't buy it, you're not going to feel feel the increase. So whatever increase might might be coming from it. Read some more of your texts, messages. Um, this person saying the budget for consultants jumped to seventy six million. Um, The government has allocated sixty-four point three million for consultancy services. Hmm. But according to twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four budget tabled in Parliament last week, the figure is seventy six. Yes. So seventy six. In the current budget, the government originally allocated sixty five point one million. I don't know, something strange about that headline. But I don't know. So 76, 70 something, somewhere around there. Lots of consultancy money going around. Uh, this text message just says, make it rain. Yes. Make it so. Uh, this person says, Chester, I admire how you talk show guys become selectively dumb when issues like the huge COI rally comes up. To distinguish the crowd at the rally, 90% of the persons represent. 90% of the persons present wore black. Okay, great. So I'm glad you let us know that. Um, I was dumb. Especially dumb to the fact that I didn't go out there. I haven't seen pictures. And it is Monday morning. Uh, and I was with my family on the weekend. Um, getting some much needed family time. So, yes. I was absolutely dumb to the fact that COI... I wasn't dumb that they had, to the fact that they had a rally. But I didn't go to it. And I didn't see anything from it. And I haven't heard anything from it, so. Um, this person says, I would rather vote for the COI than the two-headed monster, PLP and FNM. They are one and the same. Did you vote for them? You would rather vote for them? You had a chance. You could tell us whether or not you voted for them because they were represented, right? None of them succeeded, so... This person says, morning, we have no opposition. They're just waiting for the unsophisticated voters to put them back in government. If Lincoln Bain could tune down his belligerence and be humble, change his demeanor, I will definitely vote for him. If not, I am the same thing over and over. The PLP on the wrong track and the FNM had their chance. People in their late 40s and 50s need to see change now before they are retired. Wow. Let's um let's go to this break before we uh before we run out of time. And uh Morning Blend will return right after. Wake up. It's a new day. It's the start of the start of a new way. You know that day. It's the start of the end of the old way. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This segment of the news is brought to you by RBC. Get in gear with an RBC auto loan. Of course, your hot spots this morning. We are looking at Gladstone Road traffic. That is backed up halfway to Fire Trail Road. Um, so not too bad as yet 
Samala Butler Highway. Pretty bad. Backed up all the way to Fire Trail Road. Um, with some traffic backed up past the roundabout. And the traffic eastbound on Fire Trail Road is starting to pile up. We got some building traffic on Blue Hill Road. Traffic on Carmichael Road headed to Blue Hill Road, but as you get onto Blue Hill Road, traffic is beginning uh, to back up there. Seems to be slow going downtown if you're in that vicinity or headed in that vicinity. There's a uh, traffic building by Fox Hill Road on the Eastern Road. Um, headed westbound uh, seems to be situated uh, between Fox Hill Road and the entrance uh, to Blair. There is lots of traffic on Prince Charles. Certainly between Beatrice Avenue and Marathon Road. Those are your hot spots at the moment. Uh, we'll have another look at that traffic for you. This segment brought to you by RBC. Visit Arbs Caribbean forward slash gear up for an RBC auto loan. And this weather report brought to you by Bahamas First. Your general situation, the remnants of Arlene, along with a surface trough, will continue to weaken and exit the area, allowing for a more stable weather pattern across most of the area through tonight. Your special warnings, mariners and residents should remain vigilant for possible water spout and funnel cloud activity. Localized flooding can be expected to persist in flood-prone areas during heavy and or prolonged rainfall events. For the Northwest Bahamas, weather partly sunny and hot with the chance of a few isolated or thunderstorms today. Weather mostly fair and warm tonight with a chance of isolated shower or an offshore thunderstorm. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west to northwest at 10 to 15 knots over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean, but up to 5 feet in northeasterly swells along northern exposures, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas. For the central and southeast Bahamas, weather variably cloudy and hot with a few scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms across portions of the area through tonight. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west-southwest to west-northwest at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times mainly across the southeast Bahamas over open waters, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your daytime high temperature today 90 degrees Fahrenheit, your low temperature 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In your extended forecast for the next two days a week, cold front is expected to enter the extreme northwest Bahamas and become stationary on Tuesday while hyped through the midweek. We'll have your outlook for tomorrow and Wednesday in the 8 o'clock hour. That's your weather check. Visit first online insurance.com and select a Bahamas First agent to purchase, pay or renew your car or home insurance 100% online or just stop by any Bahamas First agent. Bahamas First, celebrating 40 years as the first Bahamian general insurance company. What's first for you comes first for us. That's the sound of your car or truck. That's the sound of your horn. Get in gear with an auto loan. RBC makes it easy to get your own. Get in gear with an RBC auto loan with up to 100% financing, extended repayment, and low interest rates. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash gear up. Conditions apply. That's the sound of your car or truck. That's the sound of your horn. Get in gear with an auto loan. RBC makes it easy to get your own. 
Now, almost there. Sarge, tell who else? Tell the truth. I taught a bitch walrus was dying on the sidewalk. I prepared for my 4 by 100 meter debut. More like 1 by 1 because the other 99 killing you. Funny. The Bahamas game's coming July 7th to July 15th, and Grand Bahama gotta win this. Well, you know that. Email info at thebahamasgames.org or call 322-1029 for more information. Which island is gonna win? Ready to save? You can put $100 into the CFAL Savings Express Plan and make sure your money keeps growing. Earn interest on your savings while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. Total Auto Care on Howard Road offers fast, quality auto maintenance at the very best prices. Tune-ups, oil changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, radiators, water pump replacements, and more. Need quality brand name tires for your over here to these roads? No worries. We supply Michelin, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, Pirelli, and Toyo. We'll import them fast and install them for you at no extra cost. So when your car needs maintenance or quality tires, we're on Howard Road, just before Burger King. Come see us. Total Auto Care. Call us at 341-6599 or 341-2350. Indulge in an experience that awakens your senses with Nescafe Gold. Premium Arabica coffee beans, carefully selected, roasted to perfection, and finely ground, resulting in a unique and unmatched flavor and aroma that captivates the senses. Enticing aroma, smooth taste, elevate your coffee experience with Nescafe Gold. Alive believes loyalty is not without its rewards. We're offering you a summer full of deals to say thanks for sticking with us. Enjoy free roaming, free data, cash back, and more incredible deals with the certified fastest network in the country and top-rated service, Alive gives you something worth holding on to. Hold on to the best in the business. Alive. Believe in best. Terms and conditions apply. Indulge experience that awakens your senses with Nescafe Gold. Premium Arabica coffee beans, carefully selected, roasted to perfection, and finely ground, resulting in a unique and unmatched flavor and aroma that captivates the senses. Enticing aroma, smooth taste, elevate your coffee experience with Nescafe Gold. People, what you thinking? We want something different. Uh-huh. People, what you wanting? We want up the government. Hey. I can tell them no more slunking. We want the adoption. I can tell them no more joke. <laughs> I forgot. Going down Blue Hill Road, going down Village Road, going down Nassau Road. We want local government. We want local government. We want local government. Share the love. We want local government. We are called for local government. Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. Wherever you're headed, the Custom Computers Know How team is standing by to help guide you in the East and the West. We now have two convenient locations on Patton Street in Palmdale and our newest store in the King Plaza through the Blake Road entrance. Discover the latest products by top international brands and the knowledge you need to unleash tomorrow's technology today. Drop by Custom Computers out east or out west. We're open Saturdays from 10 till 4. Tired of paying too many bills and loan payments each month? Shrink your monthly debt payments down to one easy payment with our debt consolidation loan. It also has a built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Inquire about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. If I didn't ask, what island are you repping? 
The Bahamas games are coming this July 7th to July 15th. For more information, call 322-1029 or follow the Bahamas games on social media at Bahamas Games. That's going to be exciting. Before we got to go to the news break, let me read some of your text messages. A lot of you were texting while we were on the break. Uh, this person says, if the and we turned this show into this, about the COI. I appreciate that from the first caller. But this is what we do, right? Uh, you, we talk about what you want to talk about. If the COI and its leaders would stop personal nasty attacks on persons who question them on some of their actions, then maybe they'd garner more support. They have been caught in many um, lies and fact check too many times for me to follow. That, uh, yes, it makes so much sense taxing the products you've allowed in the country for so many years and simply not putting a ban on it in the country along with the expansion of the major, major fast food chains. Um, I don't know, why can you ban those things? It is. This person says, how will this sugar tax on drinks work um, with regards to diet soda and or unsweetened iced tea? Well, maybe they won't be taxed because they ain't got no sugar in it. Uh, this person says, your paid troll texter claimed that the COI is not trustworthy, but I can tell you that in my 50 years of living in this country, I have yet to see an honest PM in this country. Okay. If you say so. This person says, COI supporters automatically expect you to accept their message as gospel, and if you don't, they belittle you. Can you imagine the level of victimization if they ever got in power? Hmm. Something to think about. This person says, Propal track, just another money pocket liner for family, friend, and lover. Make no sense. Only saying to throw people off. All add, added tax they hide in the budget. Okay. Not sure exactly how that. This person says, I did vote the COI last election, and I will vote for them again next election. Great. Did you vote COI or did you vote for an independent person? Who did you vote for? Because is it? A party, or is it a group of independents? This person says, although that murder occurred on a weekend, Guardian Radio being a news-oriented station should be on top of news, not wait for another station to announce it first. There is, there is a news press every Monday, so no excuses. I, I, don't, know, I don't know about it, so um, I don't know why it wasn't reported by us or whomever it wasn't reported by, um, but if we knew about it, we would have reported it. I, I don't know. I cannot give you that information. Um, we are not infallible. We do our best. We're going to go to the news, and Morning Blend will return after. This is Guardian Radio, 96 National Bahamas. And now at 822, it is time for your final look at this morning's weather. Brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. Your general situation, the remnants of Arlene along with the surface trough will continue to weaken and exit the area, following for a more stable, allowing for a more stable weather pattern across most of the area through tonight. In special warnings, mariners and residents should remain vigilant for possible water spout and funnel cloud activity. Localized flooding can be expected to persist in flood-prone areas during heavy and or prolonged rainfall events. For the Northwest Bahamas, weather partly sunny and hot with the chance of a few isolated showers and possible offshore thunderstorms today. Mostly fair and warm tonight with the chance of an isolated shower or an offshore thunderstorm. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west to, nor west to northwest at 10 to 15 knots over open seas, 2 to 4 feet over the ocean, but up to 5 feet in northeasterly swells along northern exposures, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas. 
For the central and southeast Bahamas, weather variably cloudy and hot with a few scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms across portions of the area through tonight. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or, in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west, southwest to west, northwest at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times across, mainly across the southeast Bahamas over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your daytime high temperature today, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Your low temperature, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In your extended forecast for the next two days, a weak cold front is expected to enter the extreme northwest Bahamas and become stationary on Tuesday, while high pressure dominates elsewhere through midweek. Your forecast for Tuesday, partly cloudy and hot, with a chance of a few isolated showers and thunderstorms, mainly across the southeast Bahamas. Winds light and variable, seas less than 3 feet. Your outlook for Wednesday, variable cloudiness and very warm with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. Winds southwesterly at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest and central Bahamas and north to northeast at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Your tropical weather outlook, tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next seven days. That brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. Visit First on Insurance First Online Insurance.com and select Bahamas First Agent to a uh, Bahamas First Agent to purchase, pay, or renew your car or home insurance 100 percent online. Or just stop by any Bahamas First Agent. Bahamas First celebrating 40 years as the first Bahamian general insurance company. What's first for you comes first for us. And as you look at traffic... Brought to you by RBC. Get in gear with an RBC auto loan. Things not looking too bad on Gladstone Road. Traffic is flowing as it gets to the base of the hill. Right Fusion Superplex. So not so bad there, but some mile about the highway. Looks like they might be moving ever so slightly not a log jam at the moment um and fire trail road eastbound traffic um while it's backed up close to the roundabout it's not extending all the way out to gladstone road this morning so that's good looks like uh, traffic is built up on carmichael road eastbound headed to blue hill road and uh, the blue hill road traffic uh, looks like it's flowing a little bit better than it was in the seven o'clock hour and um the line of traffic not as bad as it could be things are not looking so bad but prince charles is bad prince charles is very bad traffic backed up very close to Doris Johnson, uh, all the way across the light at Beatrice, all the way down to Marathon Road. Uh, it's very bad this morning. And traffic on the Eastern Road, your hot spot. Uh, not all the way back to San Susi this morning, but uh, getting there. Um, flowing ever so slightly past Fox Hill Road, westbound. And as you get closer to Village Road, lightening up. Those are your hot spots this morning. That is brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com forward slash Caribbean forward slash gear up for an RBC, RBC auto loan. Get in gear with an RBC Auto Loan with up to 100% financing, extended repayment, and low interest rates. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash gear up. Conditions apply. That's the sound of your car or truck. That's the sound of your horn. Get in gear with an auto loan. RBC makes it easy to get your own. 
Mommy, why can't dogs talk? Why do I have to go to school and you don't? Why do you sing in the morning when you're bad at it? Why don't you brush your teeth when you take me to school? Why doesn't it ever snow here? Why does Daddy take the bus to work? Why are trees so tall? Why don't you tell me where babies come from? Mommy? 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 We're like a kid that doesn't ask a million questions before noon. CG Atlantic Agents and Brokers. Good like that. Jubilee. Talk class culture. Red carpet couture. Get ready to enjoy the best in Bahamian fashion. It's Jubilee. Jubilee. An evening of culture and couture fashion show. Friday, June 9th at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort. Under the patronage of Dame Marguerite Pindling. Jubilee. Doors open at 7 p.m. For tickets and details, visit Celebrate-Bahamas.com. Celebrate Bahamas on Facebook. Call 604-1020 or email IndependenceBahamas at gmail.com. Tickets also available at Suncash. Total Auto Care on Howard Road offers fast, quality auto maintenance at the very best prices. Tune-ups, oil changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, radiators, water pump replacements, and more. Need quality brand name tires for your vehicle? Tires that'll stand up to these roads? No worries. We supply Michelin, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, Pirelli, and Toyo. We'll import them fast and install them for you at no extra cost. So when your car needs maintenance or quality tires, we're on Howard Road, just before Burger King. Come see us. Total Auto Care. Call us at 341-6599 or 341-2350. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. I feel all broke up, ain't sleep all night. My body's aching, no appetite. Scratchy throat. Funny nose too Got to see my doctor It could be the flu Oh doctor, doctor I ain't doing good If I got the flu Then that's understood He said open your mouth wide Say ah You've got all the symptoms Of the flu thus far I got the flu I got the flu I got the flu Doctor tell me what to do I got to Good. on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Chester Robards filling in for Dwight Strawn, uh, who is gallivanting somewhere. Um, I got to ask you, are you ready for the Bahamas Golden Jubilee Games? They're coming July 7th to July 15th. 16 events, 16 venues, 10 teams. Sign up to represent the team from the island you, you represent. For more information on how you can volunteer, partner, or participate, call 322-1029 or follow the Bahamas Games on their social media handles, at Bahama Games. And we are switching gears. Thank God. So, <laughs> we got the good people from Doctors Hospital in studio with us this morning. And we're talking about an upcoming blood drive. We always hear about the need for blood. And um, you're going to supply it, and we're going to get you to supply it. So uh, welcome to the show. I'll, I'll let you all introduce yourselves. We can start uh, from this uh, young lady here <laughs> and your positions. Good morning, everyone. My name is Qtel Taylor. I'm Doctor's Hospital Laboratory. My name is Megan Taylor. I am the administrator for the entire hospital. Hey. And I am Brenta Roll, the blood bank supervisor at Doctor's Hospital. Excellent, and welcome to the show. So... Uh, Let's start with the big elephant in the room, the need for blood in, mm -hmm. I can say the country, because yes. clearly we supply, right, everybody. Um, what does that look like? Why is it, uh, it seems to always be so dire um, in the country? Uh, uh, I think it's just the very nature of um, blood donation and how long uh, blood is good for. Blood actually has an expiration date. So any blood I have in my blood bank today or that I collect today, in about 35 days, that will all be gone. Right. Hopefully it will be going into um, the veins of people in need. But if we don't use it, that blood has now expired and it is no longer good. And we need to go out and get more blood from mm -hmm. um, 
donors. Right. So some people don't think about that. And I, I mm-hmm. don't think I think about that. No. That blood is going to expire. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, you, you do have to go out and, and keep replenishing the supply that you don't use. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, it's, that's just one factor also, because we also have people who come in for major surgeries. All right. Major surgeries is a key indicator for um, the need of blood. Right. All right. And these people who need this blood, they're not taking like uh, one unit or two units. These people may need up to six, seven units. And that's like seven people uh, with the same compatibility. Right. You also have to take into, um, take into chance that everybody doesn't have the same compatibility blood. Right. Everybody doesn't have the same blood type. So that means if you are a certain blood type, we may have to go through a certain amount of donors to get um, blood that is compatible just for you. Got you. So, wow. So seven units is seven people. I, I, again, I, I'm glad you're saying this because I don't think about when I hear units, mm-hmm. that, that that's the actual bag that mm-hmm. we give. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. The actual that's one amount unit. of blood. We, right. we call it a unit of blood. Right. All right. One donation is about, we, we take about 450 milliliters of blood. Right. But from that one donation, we make up to three different products. Uh, mm-hmm. But each of those are still just one unit. Right. The main thing that people think of is the blood itself. But we also make plasma and platelets from that. Right. But the blood itself, it's still only one unit of blood from one donor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about the, um, maybe Megan, you can tell us, uh, is there a relationship between Doctors Bank and PMH's blood bank? Uh, I don't know if you could say anything about that, but. Uh. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, there's certain protocols that you have to follow. Yeah. Um, so sometimes when we have, um, Blood drive. So this is our first annual doctor's hospital blood drive. Okay. But we usually assist with other organizations with their blood drive. Right. So mm-hmm. actually a factor is that we want to be able to replenish what we can replenish in both blood drives right. um, once we get those donors. Um, but we do have a great relationship with PHA and PMH. Um especially their managing director. She used to be our senior vice president at Doctors Hospital. So we have a great relationship with PHA and PMH. So we work hand in hand with most projects together. Uh, But like I said, you know, we have a few protocols that has to be placed before we make any moves. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So blood donations. Now, I just had a conversation about about donations literally this weekend. And... um, some people say, a lot of people say that they're turned away um, for various reasons. So tell us when you're coming to donate blood. What do you need to be, look like, feel like? <laughs> I think that stigma is everybody is nervous about needles and getting pricked. And um, some persons are just gored out by the actual blood, anything mm. blood mm. medical related. That's just our culture, I think. Right. But QTEL, one of the best, I say stickers, because I can <laughs> give it, but I can't take it. <laughs> And um, <laughs> that process, um, she makes very, very easy. She's very great at what she does. So she'll be able to explain that a little bit better. Great. Okay. So when a nice solid meal, this will ensure that your body is um, ready for the bleeding process. And also you want to make sure you drink plenty of fluids so you're hydrated and your blood flows. Right. So have a solid Oh, nice meal. solid meal, right? What, what constitutes a solid meal? I don't know. You know, your, your tuna and your grits. <laughs> okay. and I, I remember coming to get yeah. blood one time. And, sausage egg. And the person was like, I was like, I, I, I ate this. I don't remember what I ate. And they were like, that's not a solid meal. I was like, <laughs> okay. What, what, what was it? Okay. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was a bagel. Oh, see, no. And some coffee. You, you trying no. to pass out on our table. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, no. Make sure you can handle this process because it's a medical procedure. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. And I, I noticed you said turned away. We don't often say turned away. It's um, more likely deferred. Right. Okay. All right? right? And there are a whole list of things that may um, imply that you would be deferred as right. a donor. Mm-hmm. Right. All right? As you know, this is blood. Yeah. This is not like the most harmless um, right. substance in the world. All right? So when we defer our donors, it's mostly based off keeping a safe right. and secure blood supply. Ensuring that the blood that is trying to need is not something that is um, contaminated right. with things such as HIV, mm-hmm. HDLV, hepatitis. Because once those things are transfused um, to you as a patient, 
you ain't getting rid of those. Right. So a lot of times when we come with deferrals and why people are turned away, quote unquote, yeah. it's because they are not eligible to donate. Now it may be because this person is not healthy themselves. Mm-hmm. That's a key component. Right. If you're coming in with a uh, blood pressure of 200 over mm-hmm. 200, mm-hmm. you ain't touching you right, right, right now. Right. You need to go to the ER. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go check yourself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So a lot of things comes with. Uh, blood pressure mm-hmm. comes with your hemoglobin levels. Right. If your iron levels is too low to donate, it doesn't yeah. make sense that you come in. Yeah. If you have a, a iron level lower than, let's say, 10 or 9, you don't need to be donating blood. You need to be getting blood. Oh. <laughs> See? Wow. And a lot of times, the first time people are aware of this going on with them yeah. is through donations. Right, right. Mm-hmm. We give them that information to... Um, to know that hey, you ain't you may not be eligible to donate today. Right. It may not be um, deferral, but for today, right. you're just not eligible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but you you te- so you test iron levels before a person hemoglobin levels. Yeah. Hemoglobin, yeah. Hemoglobin, and mm-hmm. that, is that the, when you drip the thing mm-hmm. in the thing and it sink or flow? <laughs> I don't know. Sink or swim? I don't know how to do it. No, we got we we, we have a chemo cue. We level we up a little bit now. Yeah. We use oh. digital. So, right. Oh, okay. Oh, hey. So, Excuse me. The, the reading. Am I dating right. myself? Like, <laughs> right. I mean. <laughs> That's okay. So, uh, can you tell, tell us what else? Um, what else should somebody be think about themselves before they come in? Uh, so, make sure you have a solid meal. Mm-hmm. Um, what else should we think about? Um, so, I'm going to give you some uh, things would be a reason for deferrals, like right. certain medications, certain health histories, and Just health behaviors. Get straight into that, Sorry, yeah. certain medications, certain health histories, and health behaviors, because we are regulated by AABB. So, we have a certain set of guidelines that we have to follow and go through. Um, one, of the, one of it is the safety of the transfusion recipient. The patient's already in a bad situation, like Brenzel said before, so we don't want to make their situation worse. Mm -hmm. So all of our blood donors, we make sure it is a safe thing for somebody to donate, um, that it wouldn't be, that it wouldn't adversely affect them in their health. We don't want the donor to become a recipient themselves, like Brenzel said before, Mm -hmm. like with the anemia. Um, And every donor would answer a health questionnaire. And it's on things like um, history of cancer, history of bloodborne illnesses, what kind of medications you're on. And like you said before, with um, a lot of people think they're ineligible to donate because they may have diabetes or high blood pressure. But once the diabetes is not controlled by insulin and your pressure is with, within a healthy, normal range, then you're eligible to donate. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we walk every single donor through every single question, every health line item to make sure they meet the criteria. Right. right. Okay. You, you want to say something? Oh. Um, so uh, somebody asked, uh, I think they asked, how can, how, how can people easily learn their blood type? Is that, can you do that at a donation? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. That is one of the preliminaries. Correct. Oh, correct. okay. So we check um, during that process, we check for the, we check their hemoglobin, we check their blood pressure, and we also check their um, temperature. So they will learn all of that and and more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. This person's asking, why not pay people for blood donations? <laughs> because it's called donating. <laughs> Um, I just think it's a good cause. Um, okay. Technically, when you when you um, donate blood, you can save up to three lives, and it could be you mm-hmm. at some point that are asking for donors. Um, yeah. I know in the recent blood drive that I have learned that even though you know we see a lot of flyers go around saying that you know donate to persons and yeah. they I donated we had ten people donate and nothing happened this and that but it's a process you right. have to test the blood you have to make sure right. the blood is compatible in order to give to others so I yeah. I say that to say mm. you're donating <laughs> yeah. you know and you know although we as a civilization have become extremely advanced within healthcare, there's still no substitute for blood. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it cannot be manufactured. We yeah. really need the community support. Yeah. There's no upper limit to donate blood. People need blood 24-7. These neighbors include accidents, trauma patients, mm-hmm. mothers experience blood loss during mm-hmm. difficult childbirths, mm-hmm. older adults with age-related health issues, transplant and surgical patients. And despite the pandemic, the need for blood has not taken a break, but the number of donors has gone 
down over the past couple of years. Oh, really? Yeah, we uh, don't get as much donors as we used to before. That's interesting. So today, we're hoping to encourage people to, you know, come on down and roll up their sleeves <laughs> and, <laughs> and donate. Mm -hmm. That donation process also adds a level of, also adds a level of safety, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to go out into the public and say, hey, we're going to give everybody $200 if they come in to donate. And um, they fill out the form. They have the qualifier. So I honestly, um, in most cases, what would somebody do if the, at the end of the road they say all they have to do is fill out this form and they get $200? Yeah. I think about the things people will do mm -hmm. if they're saying the monetize part yeah. of it yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end of the road. Yeah. People will lie on the questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People would... Uh, well, that's a big thing. Well, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I don't qualify yeah. and don't get the 200. Yeah. I big mad. So, <laughs> so the, money, the money part behind it is a bit uh, sketchy, especially in healthcare. Yeah. Right. We yeah. try to provide something other than monetary basis. Yeah. We try to um, give out like things what we're giving out for our fair. We're going to mm -hmm. give out some gift cards and special right. things. But the money aspect of it, yeah. people mm -hmm. do a lot for $100. Yeah. 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 And yeah. a lot of a that hundred? may not help. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just to put a key number on yeah. blood safe. It, 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 it's a good deed, people. Mm -hmm. And this person really is pressing the issue okay. on being paid for something. <laughs> um, this, they said, you, you will always have enough blood in the blood bank if you pay a small amount, even gift cards. But you don't gift cards this time. You say, I disagree. <laughs> you probably I disagree. disagree too, but... Um, uh, this, so if your blood bank is on low and the brink of being completely out, then you have to think creative. Think about paying. Okay. That, no, man, that person's actively mm. lobbying for some money. Uh, <laughs> go to the blood bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a bank. I always say give, yeah. and it shall be received. But but tell us about um, what, what you're doing, because you are offering extra things around this blood drive. Yes. So on Saturday, we're going to make it into a fun day um, where we're going to have entertainment for both adults and kids. Um, we're expecting, we're hoping, <laughs> to have a lot of persons out there doing it. So we want to keep them entertained whilst they're doing this great deed. Um, we have our numerous, um, ver sorry, various departments that are going to be out there displaying um what we offer at Doctors Hospital from our LAMP program to have, you know, massages happening. Um, we're going to have some of our sponsors out there also um, assisting us. So Vitamult, um, the Milo Zeta, my, mm -hmm, um, the Zeta um, sorority. We have um, Kiwanis Club coming out, um, the Torchbearers. So we have we have a few people that's going to be out there assisting us um, with keeping the crowd alive and entertained that day. We also have special gifts for persons that are going to be donating. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, we're going to put you through the process, but we're also going to reward you at the end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you go. we're there going to have go. all kind of healthy snacks and treats, and mm -hmm. it's going to be, I say, wild. <laughs> you know, I think I said it on the show many times before, but... Um, and when I was in college, the blood mobile is, is what they called it, was mm -hmm. parked outside our college every week, mm -hmm. at least once a week, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, you just get movie tickets. You just go get blood and you get movie tickets. Movie tickets. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I tried to get a lot of movie tickets, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, because you, you wanted to donate every ah, six. That's what oh, sorry. <laughs> Rem so remind, remind everybody how often they can actually donate. So you can donate um, every eight weeks. It takes up to eight weeks for the blood to mature. We need up to six times a year. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. mm. if you're consistent with it, and that's what we're looking for, some consistent donors yeah, so we can go. always Every depend day. on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's another one. Tell them to reinstate the Guinness incentive, and they will see an oh, increase. No! <laughs> okay. Well, what had happened was... <laughs> <laughs> That's not recommended. Well, I mean, we can tell you what to do after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a cousin. They have a cousin. We have bite them out. With go. a little extra something, something. Yeah. <laughs> something, something multi. Something multi. All right. Um, there's text saying if you're blood. Oh, this is the same person. Hmm. I'm just trying to help, oh, they said. Oh, that's our friend now. <laughs> they said they donate for free every year. It's not about the money for me. <laughs> We're going to get you to donate right. at least six times a year. Come yeah. and see us on I'm Saturday. I look forward to seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really. Does Doctors Hospital charge their clients for blood? That's a question coming in the text. Oh, oh that's an administrative response. <laughs> um, we 
I don't want to say we don't, um, but if we have patients that that is admitted for emergency situations, yes. um, we recommend that you know you bring the donors in, um, but we don't withhold blood for that patient. Part of the process. That's yeah, we never, we never withhold. Right. Yeah, we never withhold that. Um, we just know that depending on the blood type and the severity um, we have, so it's not that we don't. Listen, give. listen. GQ Public or whatever you call it. <laughs> there is no other place to get blood than from you. From the body. Mm-hmm. We, we, what, what did you say, Brenda? We don't um, synthesize it. What, what's the word? Yeah. It's not cooked in the lab. It's, it's not know, manufactured. In the real world. Yeah. Um, but like, like you said, there are charges probably associated with blood um, transfusions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we got to think on the value of what both the patient is getting and what the donor gets. All right? On the patient side, we want to test. We are testing this blood extremely. Um, uh-huh. It's extremely important to test this blood to make sure when we transfuse this patient, they're not getting anything yeah. such as AIDS, yeah. HIV. And you got to think about when we're doing these transfusions, we're not giving people blood bags and kicking them out of the hospital and telling them, hey, go right. handle it yourself. Exactly. We're having them in a safe, secure, well-lit, comfortable <laughs> area mm-hmm. where they're monitored by licensed practitioners, licensed nurses. Of course. Because this is a product that actually is monitored by the FDA. It's a drug. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if we give it to you too slow, something mm-hmm. drastic can happen. Mm-hmm. If we give it to you too fast, mm-hmm. something can happen. If we give it to you and we don't clean the site properly, this can right. bring on infections mm-hmm. and make you worse than yeah. you exactly. came in. Exactly. All right. So when it comes to like the charges and stuff like that, we have to think about what we're getting and the value yeah. that we get from it. Our, our good person who suggested paying also says that they're a universal plasma donor. And they are just trying to help the country solve the problem. You know, we appreciate you. We love them on their people. They could come out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We always just appreciate <laughs> um, This person says, whenever I... Oh, this is, a, I guess, a, a question or a, a comment for Qtel. Whenever I tried to donate, I was told I have spider veins. Is oh. it because I'm dehydrated, or is it just the natural makeup of my veins? Um, it's it's the natural makeup of their vein, possibly because the needle size that we use is a 16 gauge, so that's pretty big. So you have to have a good size vein in order for that needle to sit in properly and the blood to properly flow. Right. If it's not a good size, then. Nothing's happening. You're going to be jacking j- j- little <laughs> yeah, ass. Okay. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, this person says, this person's being cheeky, but anyway, I'll read the Cheeky. <laughs> but if you ask, how often do they donate? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, um, I'm on a schedule. These two young people with yeah. me is call me and say, hey, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where are you? Time. Come and bring your blood. Bring your beans. So I, they didn't give me a chance. <laughs> we so yes. in-house donations all the time. Mm-hmm. So when we see we a make a competition need. sometimes. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, in-house where right. we say if, if the department um, donates the most, you get a little reward. And my, my DH culture is very, very competitive. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes, we good, do. Good, good. Um, good morning. Please ask the guest if um, I think I know the answer to this. This is a bio- biology question. Mm-hmm. If siblings from the same parents can have different blood types. Sure. But of course. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. Uh, that is a very good question, and it actually alludes to how when you go in to donate, you may not even be donating for the person you intend to. You may be helping somebody else. Right. Um, let's just say uh, you have a person who is, um, if you have a mother and father who are both O positive, they can have a child who is O negative, mm-hmm. meaning mm-hmm. they would not want to transfuse a negative person with those O positive um, right. blood. So they would may have to go outside of the family, outside of your family members, outside of your friends to find something compatible. All right. Just because we are brother and sister or family related, that does not mean that we are compatible blood wise. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to get into a mentality that when we come to donate, we ain't just donating for this person who I know. Right. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you are not compatible with them, that that doesn't yeah. help. I, I I feel like because I know this, I don't think about that the fact that people might not know that. But it's true when. When somebody asks for you to come in to donate for somebody, mm-hmm. you're not necessarily donating for That's that person. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just helping the blood bank to stay 
Stay woke. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fight. Fight up, fight yeah, you put it back just in. Trying to help us to help out. everybody else right. who's in need. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. If, if they don't come out, we don't help those who are who are in the hospital and die in need of blood. Exactly. You don't ever hear people say, "Hey, we are just in casual need of blood, mm-hmm. or we just We're need it for." Need. We always yeah. in dire need, yeah. and it's yeah. always necessary. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's able to give blood for whatever reason is and is turned down. They are turned down. Um, will the hospital call me and tell me that I have an illness that needs to be checked out or leave me to just move around unwell? No, the question is, the question is if they give blood. Because if you're unable and you don't give, then they wouldn't know what's wrong with you, right? But say, say you find something in somebody's blood. You mean during our preliminary? Right, so preliminary, yeah. we usually just do blood pressure, um, hemoglobin levels, and the type. I, I mean, That's I'm probably what they mean. Or do you mean from a testing? Something happens after they right. donate. After they donate. Okay, so they are. Um, we send everything to our um, Ministry of Health. So the Ministry of Health, they would also get a counseling session, and they would alert them and let them know of mm-hmm. what... It's a big database. So right. anytime somebody is flagged for, um, let's say, a positive serology, let's say HIV, that's a that's big right. thing. Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody is flagged for that and you donate, um, what comes with that, like I was talking about, these are benefits that comes with donation. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you donate blood, we find something in your blood that tests comes up positive. Right. What we do is we um, do confirmation test. Right. right. After which, um, you are consulted and contacted by our in-house physician. That consultation is free, wow. and they consult you on um, what it is that we find right. and what are the next steps you need um, to better um, yeah. uh, improve on your health or your situation. Right. So those things, you are consulted if we find anything positive. Um, positive serology, positive tests, you are consulted by our physician yeah. and you are um, notified on what's the best means to increase or improve on your health. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, this person said, I gave blood before and was dizzy the whole day. That caused me to stop donating. My mother was O negative and they called her regularly to donate blood. Mm-hmm. Of course they did. Yeah. You say liquid gold. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> our process, um, usually when we do donations, we we don't just stick you until you leave. <laughs> No, no. We actually give you what to look out for and what you should do afterwards. Um, can you tell, I guess, you can... So afterwards, you do read on um, some donor literature, which will tell you the do's and don'ts after donation. And we also allow you to um, rest for about 15 minutes, and we will thoroughly check to make sure you're okay before you get up off the bed. If you do um, experience any reactions afterwards, we do advise you to contact us and let us know what's going on. So we can yeah. assist you. Absolutely. <laughs> what I, happened? To I will. I will not read that text. Face um, it He's like. <sighs> I will, and I hope the texter knows that I am not reading their text. Oh my goodness. Um, oh. I want to say it's a. Uh, uh, anyway. Oh gosh. I'm not gonna be Dwight. Off, offline. <laughs> it don't make sense to be honest. Oh but my anyway. goodness. So tell us again. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the times for the blood drive and fair, and, what, okay. and what's gonna be going on? It's this Saturday, June 10th, um, at our main hospital at Doctors Hospital on Collins Avenue, and we. It's not gonna be in front of the hospital. We call it the Luton Parking Lot, which is directly opposite the main hospital. Right. Um, we're gonna run our hours from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Um, so we're going to have all kinds of fun, mini health fair going on, just a family fun filled day. Yeah. So come on out. It's for a great cause. Um, we're hoping, I, I always just get, you see how Brenda look at me just now? Did you see that? <laughs> I, I, I want at least 100 to 150 Ooh. donors. I want to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> trying to work us out. It's a Saturday. Go big or go home, well, right? We encourage you guys to come on down, uh, please, mm-hmm. please, please. We uh, need the blood in our backs yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. I, I know this question is um, is probably a strange question, but but how long does it, on average, maybe then does it take? Because I know I don't take long. Yeah, I don't take long at all. I take about five minutes. My I, blood is just be like leaving me. Get away! <laughs> but I, um, I got one big six inch <laughs> pipe. That- we say ten minutes, five to ten minutes. Um, but everybody. Differs. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Brenzel, you can. Yeah, it's about up. five to ten minutes, like she said, but we still monitor you afterwards. We right. don't just kick you off the right. chair after five minutes. We oh, monitor yeah. you. We make sure you have something to drink to rehydrate yourself. Mm-hmm. Rub your we, foot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not that. Maybe well, not. rehab is going to be okay. <laughs> you never know what they're going to do. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> but we also make sure everything, you don't have any adverse effects or feelings afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so the donation itself, it may be five to 10 minutes, but we monitor you for about 10 to 15 minutes to make sure everything is all well and good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we get, quickly before we got to go, if someone was diagnosed with a numerological disorder, numerological. Mm -hmm. can you say if I'm allowed to come and donate? Well, that depends. Because it depends on which disorder it is. We have a, like I said, it's a strenuous list that we go through in our screening process to ensure that, one, you won't have any adverse effect from donating, and two, the blood that you donate is not, um, is not going to affect anybody that we give it to. Right. So it is a somewhat um, long list that we go through, and uh, we go through that person to person, because everybody is different, and I don't want to say, hey, um, specific cause, and then somebody else hears it and think that it, right. is, it is on them. A lot of times we get information misconstrued and it, as it goes from person to person. So we like to have that interpersonal right. um, uh, donation aspect when yeah. we go through you. We do this to you specifically. When we tell you you can donate, it's pertaining to you specifically right. and not a general um, group wow. of people. That was a, a great conversation. Um, uh, thank you guys for coming in and, and talking to us about donations. Um, so tell us once once more <laughs> where they come, where these 100 and 200 people come I to donate. I want 200 donuts, yes! <laughs> um, this Saturday, June 10th, um, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Doctors Hospital main location, opposite our main entrance. That's called the Luden parking lot. Um, just come on out, look for the big flags, and yeah. listen out for the music. And you're probably going to have my voice. I'm the, <laughs> the loudest thing out there. Awesome. Um, so Good. just come on out and enjoy that time with us all for a great cause. We hope you're going to be there as Absolutely. well, right? Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Five I, could be five, right? I could be five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I could be five minutes. Thank you so much, Q-Tel, Megan, Brentel. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Paid some blood on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. And if it's your first time, us. hey. It's the first time for everything. Yes. Sir. Do it. Thank you so much. All right. We'll put some morning blend for the morning. We'll be back with morning blend business after this. Get check my pressure. He checked my glance. Said, take this injection, show you understand. The sixth edition of the Bahamas Games are on the way. July 7th through the 15th. Get ready for inter-island sporting competition in the spirit of unity and camaraderie. Which island is going to win? It's the Bahamas Games. Our nation, our talent, our games. And look out for the B Games crew coming to your island soon. For more information, call 809-1242 or visit thebahamasgames.org. It's been 35 years since Custom Computers was founded, and we'd like to celebrate that milestone by thanking you, our clients and customers. You've inspired 35 years of expert service and support, partnering with the world's leading brands like HP, Apple, and Microsoft. We take pride in setting the bar for what you expect and deserve from a homegrown Bahamian business. We're here to serve you with 1101 Custom Computers, raising the standard since 1987. People, what you thinking? We want local government. We want local government. Share the love. We want local government. We are called for local government. Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up.
Good morning and welcome to Morning Blend Business. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Again, I'm Chester Robards, filling in for Dwight Strawn. And um, he'll be back this week, no worry. I know y'all were like, what is he doing here? But I'm here. Um, wow. Y'all have some interesting questions on blood donation. Very interesting questions on blood donation, I must say. Um, <clears throat> so while Wayne Neely, I hope he's coming. Um, let's, uh, okay, I think he's here. But um, let me just finish reading some of these text messages from before the show. Okay, I don't understand what that text said. This person says, um, um, okay, I can't read that text either. Okay, so I'll just answer the person who sent a text about blood donation from certain people because they're scared to go to the hospital from certain people. They accept blood donations from everybody and don't ask questions about where they go on vacation and who they go on vacation with because it's none of their business, to be honest. So as long as their blood is clean after they test it and healthy and ready to go to save someone's life, they take it and they use it. They accept blood. Uh, so yes. Um, we will be talking uh, in a few seconds with Wayne Neely, if you don't know the name. Mr. Neely is the author of several books on hurricanes. Uh, he is a uh, local meteorologist. And Wayne, so his new book entitled Hurricane Dorian, the story of the greatest and deadliest hurricane to impact the Bahamas in the modern era. Um, <clears throat> the book uh, is about uh, Neely telling the heartbreaking tale of Hurricane Dorian, the greatest and deadliest hurricane to hit the Bahamas. Uh, includes the meteorolo meteorological history Records broken, compelling personal recollections, its impact on each island affected, a chapter on climate change, and its effects on hurricanes, and also the benefits of hurricanes, and why we need them on the earth. That's great. And uh, welcome to the show, uh, Wayne Neely. Uh, Good morning, Kester. In studio with us uh, now. Great to see you again. It's busy. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Busy personally and busy uh, professionally. Yes. Uh, this uh, is book number... 15. 15! And I have 16 coming out shortly on the 1923 hurricane season. Oh, really? Yeah, it's on. It's the busiest season we've had in the Bahamas on record. And during the 1923 season, uh, there were four named storms that impacted the bombers wow. in category five, category four and category five hurricanes. Wow, so. Hey, it devastated the bombers, so yeah. that's what I'm releasing. I initially was going, was going to release it uh, shortly, but the book has reappeared on the New York Times bestseller list, and so they want, the book company wants a chance to uh, allow that to, to take uh, place before the new one comes out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank that's, you. That's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so tell us about uh, this new book. Uh, it's the well, the new book is on Hurricane Dorian, and the forward of the book was done by uh, Max Mayfield, the, perhaps the most famous director in the U.S. National Hurricane, properly known for Hurricane Katrina and its impact on the United States. Uh, he was the director then, uh, and he wrote the forward for the book. The book is also featured in Publishers Weekly. It was appeared, it appeared in New, uh, the Reader's Digest magazine. It appeared in Publishers Weekly as one of the, the noted books of. And I have another. I just got a call from the uh, from the book company that actually 
uh, produced a book, and I can't discuss it yet until I discuss it with them on Wednesday. But mm. it's going to be big news for the book. It's the first time they've ever had that in their publishing uh, with the book. The book is doing exceptionally well. With this particular book? Yes. Ah, interesting. Um, so it's it's out already. People can it's get out, it. Yeah, yeah, you can get a copy it's locally at Logos in Hub Bay Shopping Center, and it's online on Amazon. It was the number one book released when when it was the number one book on Amazon in terms of the research category and also in the weather category. Interesting. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is? Is there really a lot of interest in hurricanes and what yes, they do? Yes, in- interestingly, and the good thing about it, that's a good thing. Uh, internationally, but here in the Bahamas as well, because we've all seen the impact of climate change. Yeah. And nowadays, it, you can't turn your TV on locally or internationally without mentioning uh, climate change. We've mm-hmm. seen the impact up to last year during the coal. Yeah. Uh, you saw from Travelers West West to always, almost on East Bay Street, roads were blocked off because mm-hmm. of uh, the, uh, the storm and yeah. flooding. Yeah. Uh, wherever you go, you're now seeing the impact of climate change. Whether it's in the United States, whether it's with the forest fires in San Francisco or California, or whether it's uh, flooding in Florida or Kansas or any other place in the U.S. And, right. inter- and it's the same thing in Europe uh, mm. and and worldwide. And we've seen the impact as we are small island development state here in the Bahamas mm-hmm. in a significant Even though we don't contribute to the impact of climate change in a significant way, right. we are one of the most vulnerable countries. So, yeah. And when it comes to weather, most people now pay more attention to weather than, than they did in the past. Yeah, yeah. It, it's apropos that we have you uh, on now because we are now in hurricane season. Yes. And we've seen uh, some bad weather. I know yes. people, <laughs> people yeah. were like, ooh, where did I come from yesterday, right? And they, they have they become, because right now, uh, with the upcoming hurricane season, they're going for um, uh, forecasting the impact of land, uh, El Nino, which mm. actually inhibits the growth of thunderstorms in the North Atlantic during the hurricane season. El Nino, yeah. El, yes. Okay. And uh, last few years, we've had La Nina, which right. actually increase, uh, reduce the winds in the upper atmosphere. Uh, so in other words, more systems tend to form, but in El, El Nino, which typically lasts about a year, mm-hmm. uh, the winds in the upper atmosphere become extremely strong, so it inhibits development. Now, with that being said, uh, you also have a warmer sea surface temperatures. Right now, the temperatures are 0.6 degrees Celsius above normal. Wow. And so you have the impact of El Nino, Combine that with warmer sea surface temps, which provides fuel for the hurricanes. So, right. and people, when, when you hear people, from my experience, when people say that it's an, uh, above normal, they, they really get an, antsy about it. Mm-hmm. When you hear below normal, oh, that's good, thank mm-hmm. God, we need a break. Right. It doesn't mean that. And right. I look at every season, imagine you must treat every season as a busy season. Yeah. Yeah. And one notable example you had in 1992, a storm by the name of Andrew, it devastated the uh, the economy of of the Bahamas and South Florida, and that occurred in below average season. That occurred when there were only seven named storms, four hurricanes, and one major. And the only major storm was Hurricane Andrew. So, in other words, and during the 1990 during the 1995 season, you had 19 named storms, 12 hurricanes, and five major storms. Whoa. And if if you went by averages, you would not prepare for an Andrew year, and you prepare for a uh, 2010 year with 19 named storms. Right. But we were not impacted. You think back in 1995, we were not impacted by one single storm in 1995 when there were 19 storms. Mm-hmm. And and in Andrew, we were devastated by Andrew. It's one of the more notable hurricanes in the region, right. one of the most destructive hurricanes in the Bahamas in modern day. Yeah. And it, I think it highlighted the, uh, at that time, you know, the nation had just come from general elections and the former uh, progressive Labour Party prime minister, Sir Lyndon Pillen, was defeated by then uh, uh, the Honorable Hubert Ingram. Right. And what he did to prepare the country after Hurricane Andrew, uh, I think, cemented his legacy. Mm. And and Andrew devastated the economy. And back then, it only cost two hundred fifty million dollars. But back then, that was considered astronomical. Now, you have Dorian, which is a three point four billion dollar hurricane. Right. And that 
that is going to affect us for years and years to come, that our children and our grandchildren are going to still be paying for that. Mm. We had from 2005, uh, respectively. Yeah. Uh, they impacted the economy of Grand Bahama. And it's 19, 19, 20 years later, uh, the country and the Grand Bahama economy has not recovered from those three storms. Wow. Yeah. You know, so. that, that's an intense. <laughs> so these storms have a way of bringing uh, sort of reminding people the impact that these storms can have, not just locally, but for a long time. Yeah. Progress. I, I think it's notable uh, to, to uh, just kind of look back at what you said about uh, whether it's announced that it's a, a, a year, a strong or a high number of hurricanes yes. one year or a low number this year, um, because it's always still a crapshoot. Yes. Whether or not you're going to get Keep hit. Impacted, yes. Even if there's one. There's just one and, yeah. and, and that one. Yeah. We've seen that. And what most meteorologists locally and internationally are not telling the public. Mm. Uh, several things happened within the last, two, I would say, two years, two, three years. Uh, one, the climatology. In terms of climatology, you measure hurricanes in 100-year activities, in activity right. for climatology. Right. In 100 years, you, you put those amount of hurricanes occurring over the last 100 years. The record has shown that the, the trend has not increased as has not increased any one, been almost near stationary for the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, for the last, now, when it comes to hurricane activity, also, you also measure in 20 or 30 year intervals. And in 1920, in, sorry, in 2021, from 19, 2000, uh, for the last 20, 30 years, hurricane activity, the climate average, normal clim uh, climatological average years for hurricanes prior to two years ago, was 12 named storms, six hurricanes, and three major. Mm. Uh, in the last two years, that has changed. We've now seen an, a tremendous increase in hurricane activity. One, you've, it went from uh, 12, 6, and 3 to now 14.4, 7.2, and 4. Mm. So this means that you have 14 named storms now on average. Right. Seven, seven hurricanes, 7.4 hurricanes and 3.2, or some people uh, mark it up to four, four uh, major hurricanes. Right. And that means, and that has never happened since the, from 1938 now, when uh, his eyes hit the country, uh, that changed the records for the Bahamas, because prior to that time, the busiest year on records was from 1926, when you had three major hurricanes in the, in, in the Bahamas, with and 1928, you had one named storm. 1932, you had the Great Abaco Hurricane. 1933, you had the Cuba Brownsville or or the Treasure Coast Hurricanes that devastated the, island, the economies and the islands of the Bahamas right. in 1933. And then you had one in 1941 and 1942. Mm -hmm. When the storm in 2015, you had Joaquin which was a Category 4. Right. 2016, you had Machu, which is Category 4. You had 2019, uh, sorry, you had 2017, Irma, which was a Category 4. You had 2019, you had uh, Dorian, which was a Category 5. Right. And 2020, you had Isaias. 2020, you had Nicole. So that means that those storms eclipsed the 2019 26 season onward. Now, so now this term is now considered the busiest term for hurricane activity, wow. especially the major hurricanes. So that is very compelling, and the records show. And you ask, what does that mean for you as a Bahamian citizen or uh, a resident of the North Atlantic? It means several things. It means uh, in terms of climate, it means you, you're more likely to be impacted by uh, a stronger hurricane now than you did in the past. In 19, 2004 and five, you had Francis Jane and Wilma. Right. You never had another storm since, uh, tell us, I think, a major one, Sunday of 2012. You had, right. and so you had, you had breaks in between. But now this is showing that these hurricane activities are now more frequent mm -hmm. and they're more powerful, more destructive. Yeah. And one of the things that you have to pay, and I always talk about insurance. Most people don't think about insurance. First of all, you're not going to win a battle against nature. You're never, ever going to win a battle against You go against nature, you're going to lose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like the house. The house always wins. Mm -hmm. and, and 
So when you have stronger hurricanes, you have more damage. You can't stop the flooding. And, and we've seen the impact of climate change. We've seen the impact now. What you have is a higher water table. Right. So which means that there's less, less rainfall available, to mean less rainfall that it, it was going to take to flood an area. So, for example, you see in many places in New Providence now, and not only just, it's not just New Providence, it's actually, I just came back from my hometown of South Andres. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole island is flooded in some wow. locations. Wow. So we just after, afternoon, after heavy thunderstorm, and yeah. just after. So you can imagine, extrapolate that, your yeah, afternoon thunderstorm, extrapolate that to a category, three category, four category, five hurricane. Yeah, yeah. It's worse. It's going to be exacerbated. Yeah, wow. So make sure your homes are prepared. Your flood, make sure you have flood insurance. You make sure you have hurricane insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, you make sure that if you have any loose uh, roofs that needs to be repaired, uh, windows, doors that need to be repaired, you get those done now before the hurricane season, before uh, before the major uh, part of the busy season of the hurricane activities. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so um, let's let's talk about a bit about the new book um, and uh, what what you have in there. I, I thought uh, what was interesting um, for for that is that you talk about um, the benefits uh, of hurricanes yes. and why we need them. Yes. Um, Talk about that. Yeah, well, wherever I go or wherever I speak on hurricanes, I always talk about the benefit. People look at hurricanes, and and most nine and a half or ten persons are gonna scream, "No, I don't, don't yeah. want any hurricanes. And right. Stay away from me." Yeah. But if you take a hurricane out of this earth now, you, me, and every single human being here would not live. We would never survive without hurricanes. Hurricanes have their benefits. When God placed a hurricane on this earth. I had for several purposes. One of them, to take heat from the equator to the poles. Mm. If that heat is not, if that uh, exchange mechanism does not take place, hurricanes, the, what happens is in terms of dynamic heating of the earth, the warmer region is the equator where you have the, in the poles, you have deficiency of heat mm -hmm. and you have coal there. And if the hurricanes do not, perform its function of taking heat from the creator and transfer it to the poles. Uh, we as humans, you would have the, the equator get progressively hotter and hotter, and the poles get progressively colder and colder, and eventually would not support life on Earth. Mm. Uh, hurricanes act as the Earth's filter system. You take hurricanes out of the Earth, the Earth would eventually succumb to the toxicity uh, within itself, within the atmosphere. Uh, if you look at, in terms of moving that heat from the equator to the poles, uh, it balances the, the hot, hot and cold zones. Now, on the other hand, hurricanes take heat from the equator to the poles. Now, hurricanes never get to the poles right. because uh, they become so modified that eventually, by the time they get into the uh, temperate regions, uh, the, the environment actually kills the hurricane. Right. And same thing with the, with the cold fronts. You take the cold pole air comes from the poles and transfers to the equator. The same thing with the cold front. Cold front never really gets to the equator. In right. fact, uh, I went to school in Barbados. They don't know what is the cold front. Right. They, they've never have to. They don't have to wear sweaters. Yeah. Uh, for me here in the Bahamas, you as a, uh, in the Bahamas, you have to wear sweater during the winter, mm -hmm. and and during the day, you have to, to adjust to temperature changes. That well, that balance takes place and naturally occur. Another mechanism that does that as well as the ocean currents. They mm -hmm. transfer heat uh, from one location to the next. And it's that balance that gives us love. If you take a hurricane out of the earth, hurricane cleans the air from, and so you have a cleaner atmosphere that supports life, mm. uh, which is why there's places like Mars. Well, so some people say Mars and Venus. The earth is so perfectly balanced that that only takes place on planet Earth. Right. You go to Mars, it's progress or Jupiter those is either too hot or too cold or mm. Pluto or wherever it's too hot or too cold. Right. right. And the Earth is ideal. Right. And the, they also transfer in the tropics, sixty percent of our rainfall comes from hurricanes. If you take hurricanes out of the earth, those sixty percent rainfall would not occur. Sixty. Uh, Sixty, yes. yeah. It take, uh, hurricanes and tropical uh, systems, such right. as tropical waves, uh, tropical depressions, and tropical storms. Right. Sixty percent of our rainfall in the Bahamas. So, if you look at hurricane activity, most of the rainfall comes in the north from uh, 
and and part of it in the sub, most of it is in the north. Right. Most of that rainfall occurs during the during the tropical years, during the summer months when hurricane activity are prevalent. Gotcha. And you have other ba other reason for hurricane, the benefits of hurricanes. And right. if you read the book, it goes in for not only just local, uh, not for us, us humans, but the environment as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. So. Do, do you also um, follow storms in, in the Pacific region? Yes, I, and, yes. And, uh, yeah, I follow the worldwide thing? Yeah. yes. Okay. The same thing, is, same thing is occurring. And even in the intensity yes. and the number of storms? No, well, okay. what happened, there's a balance between, well, in the Pacific, it's been uh, significantly less. Mm -hmm. What happens when there's an increase in activity in the, the North Atlantic, uh, there tend to be a decrease in activity in the Pacific in some ways, right. because when we have El, we have El Nino now, right. they're gonna have La Nina, uh, so which means that they're gonna be impacted by more storms than, than. But right. for example, places like the Philippines, Philippines on average gets eight hurricanes a year. Wow! Every single year, on average, sometimes more. <laughs> so they 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 know what it is to, and we yeah. think we in the Caribbean, we only in the North Atlantic, we only account for about twelve percent of the hurricane activity. Right. In the Pacific, is thirty three percent. Wow. And they, and they call them cyclones. They call them cyclones. Might, might know, yeah. In different regions, they call them different, uh, yeah. for example, uh, in some uh, typhoons, some are right. just named cyclones in India. Uh, and in Australia, they call willy willies and <laughs> other things. So right. it depends on, and some of them, some places they're not named. Right. And like we name them after men and women, but they name them after like rabbits or oh. uh, different names, that's trees and everything else. That's interesting to know. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, just tell us a little bit about um, what you find in your book on Dorian. I know you talk about um, it as as the end greatest hurricane to hit the bombs in the modern era. Yes. Um, when you say modern era, what do you mean? It means uh, personally, because when people think of hurricanes, when, uh, when Dorian came, well, the whole, we've seen the whole international media flooded to the Bahamas because Dorian was a unique storm. Dorian had many, com it break many records. Mm -hmm. It's the strongest hurricane on record, landfalling hurricane on record. Mm -hmm. It's tied with the labor, Great Liberty Hurricane of 1935. Uh, the wind speeds were 185 miles per hour with gusting 220 knots. Yeah. And that we didn't experience on a significant level other than Hurricane Allen in two I think it's nineteen eighty somewhere around there, mm. and so, uh, so we've had Dorian had broke a lot of records, and it's still the, one of the strongest hurricanes of the North Atlantic, and in worldwide, it's also one of the strongest, not the strongest hurricane, right. but it's one of the major storms. And first of all, it uh, when Dorian came along in nineteen ninety two, we had a Hurricane Andrew, which cost two hundred and fifty million dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a category four. Yeah. That was initially the interesting thing about Andrew was that it was a category four hurricane for ten years, and with the help of Max Mayfield, who did the for for the book, right. uh, he got the National Hurricane Center some advanced equipment that actually started that gave the accuracy these storms more accuracy. Right. And they found out that during, I mean, Andrew was actually a category five, ah, and when that took place. Uh, it's uh, one of the most intense hurricanes. Now, Dorian eclipsed all of those records, and it's now the strongest landfalling hurricane in the region. Mm. And it's also the strongest hurricane that impacted the Bahamas. Right. Now, in terms of deadly and impactful, it's, it's, I use the word modernary deliberately because Dorian, when Dorian struck the country, Dorian was labeled as the worst hurricane in Bahamian history. It right. never was, and there are many other storms that came along before Dorian that makes Dorian look like a little baby compared to devastation that those storms inflicted. Oh, wow. Dorian impacted only Abaco and Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. There are some storms, 1926 and Great Nassau Hurricane, back then never named hurricanes after men and women like they do now. Right. Then That never started until 1950, but in... 19 and, and 1866 called the Great Bahamas Hurricane of 1866 that killed 386 persons. Wow. It devastated every single island. There was a hurricane in 1899 that devastated every single island. So imagine, okay, put yourself in Dorian's shoe. Imagine the devastation with Dorian, but extrapolate to 
every island in the Bahamas. Right. That occurred in 1866, 1899, 1926, three times in 1928, 1929, except, well, no, not 1929, because 1929 was Lake Adoran because mm. it only packed in Nassau and, and Andros. Right. But in, and, and also in the 1933 hurricane season, mm. and those storms devastated the economy, and back then, we didn't have tourism to rely on. We didn't have any. The only thing we had at those times was sponging. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those sponging, or most, the, the sea storms destroyed all the sponging fleets uh. that, that went out to collect the sponges. Mm -hmm. so, for, so for a long time, uh, there was widespread suffering. There was no food. All the farms were destroyed. Yeah. Uh, the houses were destroyed. So you had no, it was greater devastation in the Bahamas than back then. Wow. Uh, and those storms you, you mentioned are ones that move from the south. Uh, yeah, move, straight change through. all straight through the descent. Most of them came up the center right. of the guy. And that's where we've been blessed and lucky mm -hmm. uh, in comes terms of modern hurricane activity. Yeah. If you look at, you think back at any storm, Francis, Jane, and Wilma, uh, you think of uh, Sandy of 2012, you think of uh, Andrew of 1990, it only impacted one or two islands in the economy. Right. The other to benefit, and you know, many years ago, the Bahamas, the, the Bahamas government did an, a very wonderful thing. They they brought over uh, a Ministry of Tourism had a conference called the Tourism Weather Conference, mm -hmm. and what the Bahamas government did, I think they need to bring that back. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought in meteorologists from around the world. They paid for that. Strangely enough, they paid for the publicity. I mean, they paid for their tickets right, right. to to come for a week in the Bahamas to. Talk about the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and the idea was it was I was the brainchild of people like Warney, uh, Warney's walk in mm -hmm. and others, mm -hmm. and they brought them into the Bahamas, and for a week, every single, uh, every single broadcast, ABC, CBS, NBC, and all the affiliates would come to the Bahamas, and they all broadcast from the Bahamas, and sometimes in t-shirt and a golf shirt with the Bahamas on it. Right. Say, oh, we in the Bahamas and we, we had the tourism conference. Yeah. The Bahamas got tremendous up with millions of dollars of free advertising from that conference. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met a lot of my friends now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they did. And for some reason, it stopped. But yeah. what happened when Dorian came along, Dorian devastated two islands, Grand Bahama and Abaco. Right. And what the Bahamas did uh, is that they had to pay millions of dollars and they had to get people like Lenny Kravis go on Ellen Giannis show and others uh, who had to go in the media. And the then Minister Diagla had to go on international media. Say, look, come to the Bahamas. The Bahamas is open for service. Because when people think of the Bahamas and which where this conference was so good, yeah, yeah. it actually forced the meteorologists to recognize that the Bahamas is not just one. People, it might sound crazy for you as me and you as yeah, a Bahamians, yeah. but a person in New York or LA, they don't know that the Bahamas is more than just a, a, a bunch of islands yeah. that have unique, different weather features, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, different... Uh, and so when that happened, the government was forced to pay millions of dollars uh, to advertise the Bahamas because Dorian struck the country and people, the tourism stopped coming in because they saw the pictures on TV that, oh, the Bahamas is devastated, so let's cancel our vacation. So we lost millions of dollars. Yeah. So we had to spend additional millions of dollars to, to convince those people that, hey, the Bahamas is an island chain. Only Abaco and Grand Bahama were impacted and it's, it's shut down. Yeah. Exuma went about normally. I did, uh, the media descended on me. I, I remember... I had like about 10 interviews lined up for international media yeah, yeah. at the Sheridan Colonial. Mm -hmm. And they all wanted to interview. And and the, it was like normal. Everyone went to work the next day with Dorian mm -hmm. in the Nassau. Yeah, yeah. And in every other island with the exception of Abaco and Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. But and the perception in the international media was that the Bahamas was closed. Bahamas was devastated. So it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Continued my vacation. And yeah. that's what happened. So and that's the problem that we have. Yeah. Uh, trying to explain, and that's the impact of clim uh, climate, yeah. climate, and also uh, weather. Yeah, yeah. I gotta ask you: Is um, is Grand, Bana Grand Bahama some kind of unique anomaly uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to the attraction of it's hurricanes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just came back from Grand Bahama, but uh, several a little while ago, but uh, a while back. But 
and they, they all say the same thing. Well, the Bahamas is, is unique in the, in the region. This is another reason why you should always have hurricane insurance in the Bahamas. Mm. Uh, the Bahamas is unique, uh, different from any other nation in the Caribbean, or, or what I'd say the North Atlantic, which includes the Caribbean, Central America, South America, right. United States, and Bermuda. And in a unique, first of all, it's in Hurricane Alley. In the Bahamas, uh, in the region, there are four types of hurricanes impacting the, uh, the region. All of them are uniquely different from each other. Mm. They, they're totally uh, separate and they form different. Their movements and their tracks are different and how they gain their energy in some cases are different. Uh, uh, most people know about the, the hurricane that comes off the African coast. That's called the Cape Worthy. Well, it used to be, it's now the Cabo Worthy. Right. Uh, and that, there's, uh, that's one type. You have the Gulf of Mexico type, which forms in the Gulf of Mexico. You have the Southern Caribbean or the Caribbean Sea. And you have the Bahama bus, which forms east of the Bahamas and come through the Bahamas. And so the, the, the islands of the Bahamas, first of all, Grand Bahama is bigger than any, uh, it's bigger than Andros, Abaco, and Grand Bahama. Those are the islands. And Ilutra are the, the four islands that are impacted more by hurricanes than any other island in the Bahamas. On the list, every year, Grand Bahama, Abaco, and Andrews are always in the top 10 activity in terms of region. Every year, mm. uh, me along with a few others, we do a calculation on the impact of hurricanes uh, on every country in the region. Okay. Uh, Grand Bahamas is always number two or number three. Wow. Then followed by Abaco, which is number four, five, six, depending on the activity the previous year. Yeah. And then Andrews is normally like number seven, eight. Uh. Elutra is number 11. Right. Now, Grand Bahamas is situated north to south. So if you have a, it's like, a, it's like shoot, uh, showing a ball at a wall. Mm -hmm. The bigger the wall is, mm -hmm. you're going to hit the, and yeah. it's Grand Bahamas. So Grand Bahamas are lying west to east, and those are lying at north to south. Mm -hmm. So it's more difficult to be impacted by a north to south than a west to east. So Grand Bahamas is always busy because it's location, mm -hmm. it's size. Right. And it's not just Grand Bahamas, it's Abaco, it's Grand Bahama, Andrus. Right. So, but just the Abaco, I mean, Grand Bahamas is always impacted by the, the, the hurricanes. They seem to, hurricanes seem to love Grand Bahama. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. You, you didn't you didn't mention number one. Let me let me let me guess. Let me try guess. Is it Hispaniola? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Uh, number one is normally uh, this year is uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. It's normally normally uh, it's Grand Bahama. Depend on activity the mm -hmm. previous year. So, and uh, number one is always number one. Sometimes different, uh, but Grand Bahama is always number two, three, or four. Right. At most. Th this is based on landfall? Landfall or, or impact? Ne we call it NEMIS or oh. activity where you get a hit, direct hit. Right. And the impact. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And New Pound is interesting. Like in the, for the last several years, it was like number 39. Now it's like number 54. So if you're from a hurricane, you come to Nassau. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good message. Um, let's take a break for the morning business report, and then we'll uh, be back to wrap it up with Wayne Neely. After a hurricane or storm, get the Nassau Guardian's Hurricane Guide. The guide will tell you where to purchase building and cleaning supplies, waste disposal, medical care, which auto shop to go to after driving through flooded streets, and much more. The Nassau Guardian's Hurricane Guide will help to make sure everyone knows what to do in the event a hurricane approaches and after it departs. Take advantage of this double insertion opportunity plus 15 radio commercials. Contact us today, 302-2300, 302-2300, or call your account executive. Will you be prepared? Indulge in an experience that awakens your senses with Nescafe Gold. Premium Arabica coffee beans, carefully selected, roasted to perfection, and finely ground, resulting in a unique and unmatched flavor and aroma that captivates the senses. Enticing aroma, smooth taste, elevate your coffee experience with Nescafe Gold. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. 
Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL. Growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. When you get back home from vacation, the last thing you want to do is stand on another line to fill out your exemption paperwork. Well, guess what? You don't. Customs just got simple with exempt. Now, with the click of a button, you can fill out your customs form, calculate duties, and even pay online while you're still traveling. Just show your QR code to the custom officer, let them check your bag, and you're out of there. All you have to do is download the exempt app. It's as easy as 3, 2, 1. Exempt. Making travel and customs simple. As of June 12, 2023, this app will become mandatory for all returning residents of the Bahamas. The exempt app is now available on Google Play or Apple. Doctors Hospital has reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. We understand that your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnoses and true personalized treatment begins. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the doctor's hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinic.com. My business couldn't survive without my credit card machine from Fidelity. It's fast, convenient, and my clients love it. My sales increased, and I can track my earnings. Get your credit card machine from Fidelity today. Call 356-7764. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. It's time for your morning business report brought to you by CFAL, uh, highlighting $1.5 billion in investments slated for Grand Bahama as well as challenges that have set back the business and investment climate on the island. The Grand Bahama Port Authority last week said it agreed with Prime Minister Philip Davis that decisive action is needed. Last week, as he delivered the 2023-2024 budget communication in the House of Assembly, Prime Minister Philip Davis said the time had come for decisive action as his administration had serious concerns regarding the compliance of the GBPA and its related companies with the terms and conditions of the Hawksbill Creek Agreement, adding that the governance model of the port needs to be changed. And be between value-added tax, real property tax, and business license fees, taxpayers continue to owe the government more than $1.1 billion, according to the government's 2023-2024 budget book. The bulk of that missing revenue is from real property tax, the payment of which the government has cracked down on since last year. The bulk of the missing real property taxes owed by foreigners, that's more than $214 million. And while the government has not imposed any new taxes in its 2023-2024 budget, there are fee increases for certain government services, some of which have not increased in 50 years. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkidis said Friday during the Office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing. Halkidis explained that most of the fee increases are associated with transactions done by non-Bahamians. The fee increases include some immigration fees and departure tax. He said the prices for some of those services have been the same for years and now cost the government more to render the service than what is being charged for it. Gladson Road Cultivation Center is to be completed this summer. The new center at the Gladson Road Agricultural Center is 90% complete. Minister of Agriculture, Marine Resources, and Family Island Affairs Clay Sweeting said on Friday, this cultivation center is expected to house food processing kitchens, a produce exchange, office spaces, and will be a general resource for food production in the Bahamas. And the Baker's Bay Utilities uh, request to split utility charges has been approved. The Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority, IRCA, has agreed to split the utility fuel charges requested by Baker's Bay Utility Limited, agreeing to pass through fuel rate and a $0.36 uh, dollars per kilowatt hour non-fuel tariff rate. 
There was some pushback from residents on the rate increase, with at least one resident, Gary Kosinski, questioning why BBUC costs are higher than most utilities in the Western Hemisphere and significantly higher than Bahamas Power and Light. The BBUC has said that the driving force behind the operational expenses that drive the tariff rate is the lack of scale that Baker's Bay is able to achieve with its existing customer base. And that's your morning business report brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. Welcome back to Morning Blend Business. I'm Chester Robards, uh, filling in for Dwight Strawn. We are talking with Wayne Neely, having a great conversation about hurricanes in the country, how they've been affecting this country over the years. He has a new book, Hurricane Dorian, the story of the greatest and deadliest hurricane to impact the Bahamas in the modern era. His, what number is it now? 15th 15, or 16th? 15th, okay, 15th yes. book. 16th is one to shortly. Right. And he's working on another one, uh, folks. Uh, we were, during the break, we were talking about how, um, you know, now we have loads of warning systems for yes. hurricanes. We know days the ahead days was, yes. um, uh, when a hurricane will impact uh, our country. But back in the day, how did they figure those things out? Oh, well, there are several ways. Uh, first of all, it's more difficult, which is significantly greater back mm. then. Uh, prior to then, you know, before, tourism was the number one in sponging was the number one in the for quite a long time. Right. So most of those men, actually, they finished school at age 14, some of them as early as 10 years old. They all went out at sea on ships, and the average sponging trip was like about six to eight weeks. So most of those fishermen would go out at sea. And they had no knowledge. Back then, they didn't have any radios or televisions to warn them about any hurricane. So the right. only thing they had were the natural elements and... Uh, birds and the movement of the clouds, patterns and everything. And as a meteorologist, for me, it would be difficult to tell where a hurricane would be impacting a region, uh, the, the country or an area, compared to where it's just an afternoon thunderstorm, because mm -hmm. they all have right. similar appearances. But back then, they looked at the natural limit, like birds, for example. Uh, birds typically, I know from, I'm a resident from South Andrews, growing up as, as a youngster in Andrews, uh, we watch the birds, especially like, for example, the, the white crowned pigeons, they would lay their eggs on the keys, fly back into land during the summer months, which is when the hurricane activity was taking place. Those birds would be chicks on the keys. So what those uh, white crowned pigeons would do, they would fly in like 6, 7 in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, fly from the keys into the mainland for Andrus, pick the birds, they spend the whole day picking uh, berries, yeah. Uh, the cocoa plums and different wild berries. And they fill their, uh, get the f full uh, berries. Mm -hmm. And around 3, 4 in the afternoon, those birds would go back out at sea. And they did that every day. And every day for a normal pattern. That was their normal pattern. Right. Those fishermen at sea, if they, on sponging trips, if they saw that at 11, 11 a.m. or noon, those birds were flying, flying back to the Keys or mm -hmm. flying back to the mainland, they realized that something caused those birds to change their migration pattern. Right. Uh, as, a, as, a Bahamian, as a Bahamian growing up in South Andrews, I knew that people, there was something called the fidget bird or the hurricane bird. Most of those persons, those would be the first birds that would sense the activity of a hurricane active, I mean, the, the sense the hurricane. The birds would be the first to sense those activities. And so once the fishermen saw that, or the sponge men saw that, they immediately turned their vessels back around and head back to the main and realized. And sometimes that saved their life. Sometimes it was too late and they were caught. See, so a lot of those boats, for example, in 1926 hurricane, over 300, 306 plus uh, sponging vessels went down in that storm. Mm, wow. And, and so... We fought in, uh, we waited until the last minute to prepare mm. for a storm. Now, back then, those men didn't have that luxury. Yeah. Do you cover that in, in any of your books? Yeah, most yeah. of my books talk about that. In yeah. fact, uh, in 1926 to 1929, you had 
many persons dying in those storms. And in one book, in the 1926 hurricane, uh, there, was a, there was a storm called the Great Nassau Hurricane, which devastated uh, the islands of, of the family islands. One of them was Cat Island. Mm -hmm. uh, the commissioner uh, in his report said at least 79 persons died in the Bay District alone. Wow. And most of those were, most of the times when the, the hurricanes occurred and, and someone died in a settlement. It's not, just today it's different now. The family makeup and f is different then than it is now. Yeah. Nowadays, the, the women run the home now mm. and to a less extent, the men. Back then, the men ran the homes. And if that man died, that basically, that was disaster for the entire family went off the house. And in 1926, a hurricane, at least 79 persons in the Bay District in Cat Island. And so a lot of those widows at the time, from 1926 until 1933 season, they complained, they petitioned the governor at the time, said, look, you all need to find a way to stop these storms from killing our men because they are destroying the homes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they, they took, I, from what I, my, based on interviews that I did, they, they took several trips to Nassau to petition the governor to find a way of uh, getting the message out about these storms. Right. And eventually, there was the first radio station called ZNS mm -hmm. that came about because the devastation that those storms occurred in, from 1926 to 1933. They, those, those women at the time, they uh, did a tremendous job of getting to look, we need to find a way. And on the 26th of May, 1936, ZNS was formed. Mm -hmm. Since that day, uh, since that time, the, the death toll in 1926, NASA hurricane, the, uh, and 1,500 persons died from those three hurricanes mm -hmm. in 1926. In 1929, right. there were 142 persons dying in the Bahamas. 19 32, there was 18 in Abaco. Mm. And 1933, there were several, there were many persons as well in yeah. those storms. And since 1926, the devastation has been significantly less. And the only blimp or the only abnormally historian which occurred where we had 74 persons. Right. In 19, there was a storm in 19, in 1942, 10 persons died mm. from Andrus. Right. But they died, but they knew the storm was traveling, but right. they tried to outrun the storm. Uh, and they heard it on the ZNS mm -hmm. that the storm was traveling, but the then person convinced them, said, look, let's, let's go and outrun the storm. And the storm caught them uh, from moving from Fresh Creek to Nassau, and mm -hmm. 10 persons went and stopped. Since then, there was like one in, one in Donna, one in Betsy. Right. Andrew was four. So we've seen the impact of modern day technology right. on these storms in the Bahamas. That was interesting. Is that why they called it Zephyr? <laughs> Nassau and sensed and we tell and back then was to educate inform, educate and entertain. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, that was not the purpose. The only purpose Zephyr at the time mm -hmm. when they created ZNS, the King of England and with the governor, mm -hmm. the only reason that came about was as a hurricane warning station. Right. People think that hurricane ZNS was a new station. I've seen the impact as a, as a boy growing up on the island. My grandmother, who was from Auckland, uh, my parents growing up, the only reason that came about was as a hurricane warning station. And it did a tremendous job. It still, it did a tremendous job of alerting people. Now this is now function with the private radios and right. television and everything. Now you can follow a hurricane yeah. from the, its origins on the African coast. Yeah. Back then, didn't have that luxury. And so Zedness, once Zedness came to be, the hurricane deaths dead tremendously went down, significant. Right. It was like night and day. There's no wow. comparison. For, for example, 1929, 142 persons yeah. Yeah. compared to now. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, most of the storms, there was one in, there was one in Wilma. Uh, to, uh, Wilma was uh, uh, a small baby who died in Wilma mm -hmm. in Grand Bahama. Yeah. That was uh, Matario Pintad. And Sandy, it was Tim Smith from Dell Tech Bank. He died because he got the warnings and they, he went to try and just to shelter. Mm. Uh, and the, and the, the bus gossip wind blew him off the second floor oh, wow. and he died. Wow. Kenrid, Kenrid, uh, Kenrid Delaney was in Francis. 
he was electrocuted doing a generator. Oh. Uh, you have other, yeah. uh, other person who one was going to work in Exoma, the breeze. Mm. Uh, he was going to work uh, during the storm, mm. and he was washed away in the flood water. So those were, wow. those are errors. Those yeah. are storm errors. They're yeah. not because of lack of knowledge. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we got to wrap up here, but um, just tell us a little bit about um, you. You actually have in this new book um, personal recollect recollections of, of what yes. happened uh, in Dorian. Is that that different from other books? Do you also, uh, you know, yeah. all of my books. What I do, I. I interview persons who experienced yeah. it, and, Got you. and I have um, I traveled to the different islands mm. that I impacted. I interviewed a person who experienced the storm in a significant way, yeah. and Dorian was com it was a compelling one because a lot of persons was so raw, it was so real, and yeah. that some of them I I could not I had to shut the interview down. Some of them, mm. I some of the recollections I could not include, yeah, yeah. Wow. and so I have recollection of all the books, all the books that I write experience and because it's my job as a media as, as an author yeah. and I don't do it to to bring the person down or to mm -hmm. I do it so that if if someone saw that this person made a mistake in this storm yeah. uh, and they stayed in a building when they should have left mm -hmm. or uh, they made an error yeah. and if I can tell 10 persons a uh, for a future hurricane yeah. that would prevent them from dying for example in, yeah and March of 2016, uh, the then commissioner, uh, Ellison Greensler, and the late uh, Leon Bethel saved about five to 600 persons who were caught in, in South Beach. Uh, the water flooded. They stayed in their homes. And if they can see that the danger associated with remaining in your homes rather than go to a hurricane shelter, yeah. then my job is I'm informing people Absolutely. Not to do what to do, not to do in the next storm should that occur. Absolutely. God forbid. Absolutely. Uh, Wayne Neely, that's our show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Um, keep on doing what you're doing, doing a great job. Uh, you're a rare jewel uh, mm. for, the, for the Bahamas. Um, that's Morning Blend Business. Uh, we are back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., right after Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Stay tuned for On the Clock with Aaron Green. That's up next. I'm Chester Robards. You have a great and blessed day, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.